Welcome to Powerlifting America National Championships Day 2. I'm your host, Six Pack Lapidat. You might know me as King of the Lifts. On the men's side, we have the 83 and 93 kilo classes. On the women's, we have the 63 and 69 kilo classes. On the men's in the 83s, it is the heavily hyped Delaney Wallace making his debut. In the 93s, IPF world champion Jonathan Keiko has a sensational battle with deadlift specialist Chance Mitchell. In the 63s, IPF world record breaker Megan Scanlon makes her return. In the 69 kilo class, Chelsea Savitt and Kristen Dunsmore will battle it out to earn their spot on Team USA. Who will it be? Stay tuned and find out. I am in the booth right now, joined by none other than junior world champion in the 93s, Gavin Aiden. Gavin, I can't think of a better guy to have with me commentating on the battle of the 93s here today, my friend. My man, first and foremost, as always, thank you so much you bet. for inviting me uh, for this amazing opportunity. But even beyond that, I definitely want to, you know, I can't think of somebody better to be doing this with, you know? So. <laughs> we'll do our thing. It is going to be tight. It's, it's literally going to be down to the last deadlift. Anybody who has followed the training of these guys know Jonathan Keiko is looking to build that subtotal. He's got a good deadlift on him. He just happens to be matched up with possibly the most dangerous deadlift artist, maybe even in the world today in the IPF. Oh, absolutely. But that's what this sport's all about, right? It's about being the strongest. This sport is all about being the strongest. And at the end of the day, um, it's events like this that, that build champions, right, that, that allow you to prove your worth. Um, I'm so stoked, man. I'm so excited for this. I think they're both going to do phenomenally well. I know you're also familiar with 83 kilo rising star Delaney Wallace, you know, set everybody on notice in 2021. And in 2022, I've been talking to him. You're familiar. You're friends with him. Oh, yeah. He is looking to make a powerful statement that he is the best 83 in the world. Now, in New Zealand, there's Tim Monogatti, who's likely to meet him at the World Championships. What kind of a statement do you think he's going to make here today? You know, I think Delaney is here to prove uh, that he belongs here. You know, like like many strength athletes, the goal is to be the strongest. Um, and at a national championship, you don't take it lightly. No matter what the competi competition is, no matter what's coming ahead, you're focused on the present, you're focused on being the strongest, showing up, proving that you have you have prepared. You know, and I think he has absolutely prepared. And I'm ex extremely excited for Delaney. There is There are very few people who work as hard as him in the, in the weight room, and I know that firsthand. So very, very excited for him. It's going to be exciting stuff. In the 63s, we also have Megan Scanlon returning IPF world record breaker and in the 69s Chelsea Savitt will be battling Kristen Dunsmore for placement on Team USA but right now we're going to throw it down to the platform where Teresa Willis will open up with 132.5 kilo 295 pounds. I'd spoken with this young lady in the back she was told me she was telling me she was actually an 84 kilo lifter, dropped 33 pounds to make it into the 69 kilo class. Discipline, hard work, and here she is. And a little bit of insanity, that's crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, that's exactly what you want your opener to look like. Get on the board, and then you can start making jumps. Yeah, look great. What do you think on that depth? It's <laughs> better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt there on the depth. Leave no doubt. Precious Andrew, 69 kilo class as well. Opening up with 155 kilo. And, you know, I say it every time, but it bears repeating. You just want to get on the board, but every now and then, Somebody flies a little clo too close to the sun, or maybe a technical difficulty, somebody misses their opener, and it's, oh my gosh, here we go. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely comes down to game day strategy as well. These are things you want to talk about with your coach going into big meets like this. Have you ever missed an opening lift? On depth, I have, yes. Um, I've also gotten reds for timing out as well. That happened at uh, USBI Nationals. But uh, not, a fun, not a fun experience because you kind of have to retake it in experiences like this and at meets like this. This is when it tests a lifter's resolve, and that is 
you know, well said in terms of the timing out, you got 60 seconds to take your lift. Precious getting the groove for that low bar setup. Little stutter halfway, but that looked like more like uh, a potential misgroove as opposed to a strength thing. I don't know. What do you think? Take a look from the side here. You know, it's sometimes it is that. Sometimes it's a misgroove, and it's not a strength issue. You know, the bar path is key in the squat. I mean, very key in the bench press. You have a misgroove, it's going to look like it's strength all day, but could be a small adjustment and you're back in. Nevertheless, she got her opener. It's going to be interesting to see what she decides for her second attempt. Ellen Liverpool, we're in the 63 kilo class now. Get the lift athlete. Handled by Arian Messi Kamesi, my co-host on the podcast. King of the lifts. Ellen's got a big squad on her. 157.5 kilo, 347 pounds for her opener. Smooth, steady. Very, smooth. very, very smooth. Here's the thing. You know, the proposition is you want it light enough, you're on the board, no doubt about it. You don't want it so light that to stay competitive for your second attempt, you're taking a massive jump. Yeah, well, you know what? These are also things that you can you can prepare for in training, right? Like, if you know that that might have to be how you, you strategize or how you're going to take your attempts, then just do that in training. Right. You know, just adapt to it. Yeah, you're 100% right. Don't leave it for the day of. Right. And uh, Kristen Dunsmore, wily veteran of the game, won national titles, been to the IPF World Championships before, wants to return. She had suffered some injuries leading into the previous IPF World Championships in 2019. Didn't have the showing she wants. Here is a possible redemption story, but she is deep in a battle of the 69 kilo class. 157 and a half kilo gets moved pretty easily. Very strong squat. That was extremely strong. Three wide lights. Take a look at the depth here. Right on the money? That was perfect. No need to go any deeper. You don't got to yeah. get no extra points. If she can maintain that tension going into her second and third, I think her squats would be very, very strong today. Now here is her rival for that American team spot, Chelsea Savitt. Interesting story here. Kristen actually coaches Chelsea, programs for Chelsea, peak Chelsea to possibly beat her and bump her off the national team. That and they are neck and neck, my friend. This is a battle, so. That's awesome. That is incredible. The student becomes the teacher. That's it, 165 on the bar in kilos, 363 in pounds. Chelsea, also a world's veteran, also suffered some injuries. For a while there, her powerlifting future was in doubt, made a comeback underneath Kristen, Dems, Chris, uh, Kristen Dunsmore's tutelage. And here she is, battling for the same spot as Kristen. Oh, baby, let's go, let's go, let's see it. Now there's storylines here. You can't make this stuff up, folks. Let's see how the opener works. Oh, uh oh game on. And the battle is on, ladies and gentlemen. All I'm going to say is she's got to be careful. This is, this is if she does too well, those coaching rates are going to get jacked up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Chris Dunsmore told me, I kind of win no matter what because if I win in competition, okay, I win, I go to Worlds. If I lose, well, I was her coach. <laughs> so I get some bragging rights, That's don't exactly I? exactly right. Uh, you got to look at the bright side of things. And Megan Scanlon opening with 107 kilo, 70 kilo. Megan Scanlon in 2019 went to the IPF World Championships representing USA in the 57 kilo class. Breaking world records, took the world record total, ended up going home with a silver because Maria T with the Hail Mary third attempt on the deadlift. Sensational battle. She has returned in the 63 kilo class. Looking to return to the IPF Worlds. Smooth opener. Very nice. 
mean, these look strong, man. It looks like everybody, for the most part, is they're they're being very smart in how they're selecting their attempts, and they've all got at least you know two and a half to ten kilos of breathing room for that second attempt, which is exactly where you want to be. Yeah, I'd agree with you. Look at these are veterans. I'd mentioned their pedigree in terms of competing at a world level. They're not going to get rattled. They look across. We got some battles here today, but they've been in battles. They're battle tested. Tessa Willis, 69 kilo class, 142.5 kilo on the bar for her, 300 and just shy of 315 pounds. You know, it's interesting when you're like Tessa, coming from you know previously being an 84, now a 69. When your body changes, you know your squat stance changes. What feels tight now you got to bring your hands in. There's an adjustment to be made, and appears to be making the proper adjustments. 10 kilo jump, it's sizable. Oh my goodness, so strong, so so strong. And this is a relatively quick turnaround for these people at Gavin. Um, I know you've done some powerlifting, you've done some international competitions, and how much of an adjustment is that when you got to start coming out, you go in the back, you got maybe a few minutes, here we are back out again. You have to adjust those numbers, don't you? Oh, yeah, and this is, again, it all comes down to preparation, man. Preparation expels all doubt. You really want to make sure that in your training, you're taking you, – no, no stone is left unturned, man. I mean, you are taking your time to go through absolutely everything. That way on game day, no matter what is thrown at you, you can handle it. Well said. Precious Andrew looking to handle 160 kilo. Took a 5-kilo jump from her opener. We're in the 69-kilo class. Now, we're going to find out. Was it a small little adjustment needs to be made? And this happens, look at your nerve. The first squat is usually the most nerve wracking. And absolutely. the second sometimes moves even better, even though it's heavier. Yeah, absolutely. Now, did she cut that a little? Uh, you know, it's borderline on depth. It moves smoother, but it looked maybe borderline. Let's see. Oh, it's in. She got it. Let's see. Let's take a look at the. Oh, this is the side where I think the ref gave a red. Well, you know what, that was right on the line. Very similar to a previous squat. I think people underestimate how much um, the mental game plays into squats, especially. Um, and that's something that, again, something like an opener, even your second attempt, it is a battle. It is something that you might struggle with in terms of confidence. And it, it takes a lot of confidence to be able to hit the hole hard and uh, not just hit depth, but be strong out of the hole. Look at that determination. 100%. You know, when the nerves come in, you do you do funny things you're not used to, and that's the difference between competition and training as well sometimes, and you build that experience with all your exposure at this top end. Ellen Liverpool, about the experience, 165 kilo. This is 363 pounds. We're in the 63 kilo class. Ellen previously was a weight class up, cut down. Looking to give Megan Scanlon a run for her money. Oh my gosh. That was smooth. You know, look, at you got a legend like Megan Scanlon. She wants that 63 kilo spot on the U.S. national team. Ellen's telling herself, I got to play it smart. I need to go nine for nine. Megan opens the door of opportunity. I'm going to walk through it. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, it, it, it's also, it's one of those things too, man, where uh, you got to burn your ships, you know? You got to leave no stone unturned. You have to leave it all behind, man. You have to attack the island. Um, it's the only way. It truly is the only way. Hashtag burn your ships. Kristen Dunsmore, 167.5 on the bar for her in the midst of a battle with her friend, with her client. But guess what? There is only one spot on the U.S. national team, and both of them want it. There can only be one. 369 pounds on the bar for her. 10 kilo jump. It's sizable, but you know she's been around the block. This is not her first rodeo. Let's see how she handles it. Very smooth walkout. Wow. She's on today. Dude. She's on today. That was strong, man. That was really, really strong. Now, Chelsea, we said Chelsea Savitt and Kristen Dunsmore were neck and neck. They are literally going back and forth here. One squats, then the other, and expect it right until the end. Chelsea Savitt about to hit the platform, 175 kilo being loaded on the bar for her. 
385 pounds. And this is a sizable uh, 10 kilo jump as well. Kristen coming in was believed to have a bigger deadlift. Uh, we gotta see on, on game day. So if Chelsea gets a bit of ground on squats, Kristen's looking to gain a bit of ground on deadlifts. Bench press, let's see what happens. It's gonna be tight. Oh, absolutely. That's why it's so important. Every lift is so important when it's this close to battle. Chelsea was in the World Championships, I believe 2017, we're going back years. She's a veteran. Two veterans of the game, battling it out. Wow. Oh, wow, she's happy, she's confident. The smile at the top says it all for Chelsea Savitt. Wow. She also seems to be one of those lifters that just brings the energy. You know how some lifters just get so violent, so aggressive, that's how they find their void? She is. She looks like she's one of those lifters, and uh, she definitely burned her ships. You know what? It looks like as the weight gets heavier, her intensity goes up, her confidence goes up. Absolutely. Not in the reverse order. Megan Scalen, you want to talk about intensity and confidence, 177.5, former world record holder. Would absolutely love to get back to the IPF World Championships. Well, here's her chance. Smooth, strong. Head up, doesn't get jockeyed out of position. Slower than the opener as you'd expect. What do you think of Gavin? Honestly, I think it looks really, really strong. I think she's maintains a ton of tension. You can see that bar path that stays straight over the midfoot. That's all you can ask for. You know, if that chest starts to come forward, if that upper back isn't tight, yeah, you're gonna run into issues, but she seems to be uh, in complete control of that barbell. Now, what would you say she should do for a third? Because keep in mind, Worlds is a relatively big turnaround. Um, she's the favorite in the 63s. And in the Worlds, you know she's got Leah Bavwa, you know, who's an absolutely phenomenal, setting the powerlifting world on fire right now. Would you caution going too much heavier in the third, or? You know, I think going heavy relative to what she is capable of, right. um, I think that's fine. It's just as long as it's it's the exertion that matters, right? We don't need her to absolutely empty the tank and destroy herself. Sometimes it is healthy and, and good to see exactly where you're at at a national level meet with national level referees, right? Especially in terms of preparation, but I think she'd be perfectly fine going heavy, just, you know, can't, can't empty the tank. Well said, it's all relative. And when you're a former world record holder in the squats, you got a relatively big squad on you. Tessa Willis, 69 kilo class, 150 kilo on the bar for her, 330 pounds. Looking to go three for three in the squats, building her total. Looked like she's gonna get it for a second now. Did. Did. I tell you what, even though she failed it, it was an appropriate attempt. Um, she came close enough. It's, it's that, you know, you can only do two and a half kilo increments. It's the smallest, so. Yeah. Do you leave kilos on the table or do you push it? Well, when you're on the national stage, you push it. And looking to push it, Ellen Liverpool, 170 kilo on the bar for her. Returning to the 63 kilo class. Ellen, a get the lift athlete, coached by Kingless Podcast co-host, friend of mine, Bill McCarthy, watching. Five kilo jump. As mentioned before, she needs to stay tight to Megan. The door of opportunity might open up. Whoa! That's wow. how you stay in the pocket, my friend. Stay oh, with yeah. it. Oh, yeah. Hey, you blink, you miss it. She's that fast. That's a good lift, too. Look, at, if the door of opportunity Three swings open because Megan starts missing lifts, she's doing what she needs to do to stay tight enough to threaten. Yep. Everyone knows Megan Scanlon's pedigree. Everyone knows she's the favorite, but you got to do your job to stay tight. Yeah, absolutely. You got to stay in the pocket, man. You got to. At the end of the day, it's about points on the board because you never know. Your best strategy, especially in meets like this, is to go nine for nine. 
Sports upsets happen all the time. You gotta be ready. Precious Andrew ready for 170. We're back in the 69 kilo class, 10 kilo jump, which is sizable. Now, opener, a little shaky in the midsection. 160, five kilos up, actually moved better. 10 kilo jump, let's see what happens. Yeah, I'm very curious to see what happens. I think her second looks strong, but let's see. Does fortune favor the bold? Same sticking point. I thought she might, I mean, she she didn't get pulled out of position too badly, just probably a strength issue, maybe. I think so, I think so. I'll give her this, though. Um, even when the slowdown happened, she stayed tight with her technique, and you didn't see any major breakdowns, but there's a lot of things you can do. You can't get stronger in a matter of 60 seconds. Here's Kristen Dunsmore. Obviously staying in the 69 kilos, 172.5 loaded on the bar for her five kilo jump. Coming back from a glute injury that had hampered her in the 2019 World Championships. She did not have the performance she wanted. If she wins this battle, she will return to the IPF Worlds and rewrite the ending of that story. Honestly, that was a perfect third attempt. You know what? If the glute injury was coming back, not today, my friend. She was going to battle through it. A hug with Arian. She needed that. She needed to go three for three. The battle's too close. She can't lose ground on Chelsea, who, by the way, here she is, 180.5 kilo on the bar. This is an American national record, a chip now in play. When it's this close, you start winning by 0.5. Sorry, Gavin, to bring up bad memories, but <laughs> it happens. 197.5 on the bar for her. 397.5 on the bar for her. Hold on, I'm taking out the knife. For my, <laughs> oh, my man, I'm sorry. <laughs> but it will come down to the chip sometimes. This is all strategic, and the battle is going to be close. Chelsea needs this squat. Cut the tension with a knife. absolutely steamrolled that squat. That is the definition of a unit. She absolutely tanked it. That was insane. Did not, never at any point got pulled out of position. Smiling at the top because she knows she has it and looking to continue with this positive momentum going into the bench press. Megan Scanlon now, 182.5 kilo on the bar for her. 63 kilo class. This is 402 pounds for Megan. She's broken world records in the squat. This is her wheelhouse. Big brace. Depth looks good. Nope, uh, just a little too much. You know, if you got to fail on it, at least she didn't empty the tank, grinding it out, and has to continue her day like that. Yeah, you know, I wonder if that's intentional sometimes. Like, do you think some lifters, I've never done that, do you think some lifters will, if they know, you know what, this isn't there, I'm not even going to waste my energy fighting it, I'm just going to let it go. Do you think that that happens? I'll tell you what, if you get pulled out of position and it's a misgroove and you realize I'm misgroove, if I try to struggle through this, empty the tank for no good reason, possibly injury if it's badly misgroove, yeah, don't chase bad money as they say in poker. Um, it's not a lack of heart, it's actually a, a good decision because she actually has worlds coming up and needs to be ready. Now, having said that, Ellen Liverpool did not miss. 
Mm. And we had said the door of opportunity could swing open. So we'll have to see how this how this day opens up. Scott Stratford now in the 93s. We're going to keep moving on to a new flight. This is an opener now. 182.5, 402 pounds for Scott Stratford. Everyone is ready for the 93 kilo battle between sitting world champion Jonathan Keiko and deadlift demon Chance Mitchell. It's underway. Smooth. And just like that, Scott Stratford is Three white lights, that's what you want to see. We're gonna jump way up to With a battle this tight, Tyler like Wilson. we're going to see between Jonathan Keiko and Chance Mitchell, handling becomes a variable. And Joey Flex will be handling Jonathan Keiko, and Matt Gary will be handling Chance Mitchell. Two legendary coaches going head-to-head. -head. It might come down to attempt selection. Tyler Wilburn, also in the 93s, 205 kilo on the bar, 451 pounds. These are only openers, so we're anticipating. Smooth, easy lifts, but every now and then, my friend. Yeah, every now and then. Well, you know what it is, too? I mean, at the end of the day, you never know. When it comes to meets like this, there are so many other variables that people like to forget about. You know, water cut, for example, travel, um, the hotel, like, literally anything, food. You want to be cognizant of all these things. Oh, nice and smooth. Yeah. No, it's very well said. It's there's storylines unfolding we're not even aware of. Um, you know, you have, you were on the podcast talking about your situation, cutting weight and whatnot, and it can hamper you. And you can get stronger as you rehydrate as the day goes, but you don't want to gamble if you have any kind of question mark around you. The opener is not when you gamble. Exactly. Get on, get on the board. Jonathan Losa. We're, stay, we're in the 83 kilo class now, 215 kilo, 473 pounds, just shy of 474. What the heck will round up for Jonathan? Wow. Oh, wow. Well done, three white lights, we're and thus far, no major Scott drama. Jennings. That looks very smooth, very strong, almost like a little light for an opener, but still, that I mean, that looks really strong. And like I said before, you know, some lifters are comfortable with massive jumps. Ashton Ruska takes massive jumps, you know, uh, whereas other lifters only want that five kilo, five to ten kilo range. Scott Jennings in is opening with 237.5 kilo. He's actually from Bar Jamaica. The Scott Jamaican Jennings. team offered an opportunity to come to the Powerlifting America Nationals, get some good experience with this kind of level of judging, kind of level of competition even. And I don't gotta tell you, experience goes a long way when you wanna develop as an athlete, as a coaching staff, and as a federation. Oh, absolutely, it's everything. 237 and a half, 523 pounds on the bar for him. The Jamaican flag is waving in the crowd. See what the judges say. Three white lights. Awesome. Good for him. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's incredible that they have this opportunity. I'm really grateful and glad that they have this opportunity because I think this will go a long way. We were talking about this earlier, um, but there's not as much going on. You know, outside of the U.S., it's actually very difficult probably to get experiences like this. Um, so to have this under their belt is going to be huge. Yeah, particularly in some regions, you know, in, in growing regions for our sport, um, like in Jamaica and certain other nations in the Caribbean, it means a lot. It means a lot. And Javon Da Costa, also from Jamaica, in the 93 kilo class, 237.5 kilo on the bar for him in his opener. Man, he's got some nice chains on. <laughs> Blinged out. Maybe in the future he could add to the hardware with some metals. Oh, yeah. That was fast. Totally blew up 237 and a half, not taking any chances. You know, and you see these lifters from Jamaica. 
They're living in the moment. They're living it up. I see them in the hallway Here's taking pictures with five, Taylor six, Atwood, you know, taking eight, pictures with five, Heather Colliner, being six, present and enjoying the experience. Yeah, you know, when they go home, they're also bringing that enthusiasm back, being like, you guys got to go. Oh, absolutely. And no, no doubt about it, they're having some conversations with these elite athletes, and it's inspiring them to be an elite athlete, you know? Um, and that's what this sport is all about, man. Like, that is what this is about. It's about finding ways to elevate yourself, uh, build a stronger version of you. And when you come to events like this you have no choice but to elevate and level up because you are literally around the best in the world iron sharpens iron sean Jin, 83 kilo class 252.5 kilo on the bar for him 556 pounds Oh wow, smooth, easy. No doubt there, leave no doubt. And the bar is being loaded for the 83 kilo sensation rising star, Delaney Wallace. 282.5 kilo being loaded on the bar for him. A lot of height coming on this young man. He had hit an 822.5 kilo total last year. He on social media had said, I tell you what, I think in 2022, I'll be good for 850 or more. Now we're not expecting that maybe today, but we can expect, wow. I don't want to over. I don't want to Yeah, I let's not. Yeah, Leo, back uh, up a second, buddy. <laughs> all right? <laughs> don't get too far ahead yeah, of yourself. Yeah, I get ahead of myself. Pay attention to this young man's setup. Always the same. Whether it's the warm-up room, the training center, or the platform. He's got a style to him. All his own. That was pretty easy. easy. I mean, he's been um, he's been so eager to step on this platform. I'm I'm rooming with him this weekend, and uh, man, dude, every five seconds we're having a conversation about how hungry he is uh, to make this happen and, and make his way to worlds. I know he's seeing 2022 as his real coming of age year. 2021 was a breakout year where everyone recognized who he is. 2022, he wants to make a statement. Yeah. Yeah. And Jonathan Keiko, here it is the. Battle of the 93s, reigning IPF world champion, opening with 282.5 kilo, 622 pounds. This battle is as tight as you get. It's gonna come down to the very last lift, but it all begins right here. And if anybody has been battle tested, it's Jonathan Keiko. Very smooth. Very smooth. Nice and smooth. You know, the one thing about John, too, though, is he's probably one of the most consistent lifters I know. Like, in terms of going nine for nine, putting points on the board, um, even from a technical perspective, you never really see him mess up, you know? Um, which is dangerous. That's a weapon, you know? It's even in the biggest of battles, with Ka which Keiko has been in, nine for nine performances to win them. He's going to need a nine for nine performance today because he's up head to head with Chance Mitchell who's opening with 285 kilo. Chance Mitchell, nobody's fool, recruited the legendary Matt Gary to handle him. He knows it's going to be tight. Every kilo is going to matter. Chance has a big squat. If you like his squat, you're going to love his dead. Let's see how this moves for him. Oh no, the battle is on. That was smooth, Gavin. That was clean. That was very clean, very tight and very clean. Uh-oh, let's get this. Look at the 69s did not disappoint. 
it earlier with, the, with that battle. This is going to be just a sight right down to it. Nobody can miss. You can't miss. No, no, you can't. But you know what? This is good preparation for Worlds, man, because you definitely can't miss at Worlds. So no matter who you are, no matter who you compete against, too big of a stage, too many things can happen, too many variables, you gotta be dialed in. And I'll tell you who they right, might be right. they will be competing against. <laughs> Gavin Aiden. That's exactly right. That's exactly and I'm and I'm stoked for it, man. I'm so stoked. You got a scouting report going on right now, unfolding before your eyes, Gavin. Scott Stratford, also in the 93s, 192.5 on the bar for him. Had a chance to meet this young man at the weigh-ins. Could not be nicer. Ten kilo jump for Scott. Appropriate second. Good second. Yeah. Good, yeah. second. Good second. Good second. He's got room to grow. It was work. He's got room to grow. Yes, indeed. I had no doubt. Load the barn of 479 for Tyler Wilburn. So, in the first flight, in the battle of the 69s, Kristen Dunsmore and Chelsea Savitt both went three for three. We had said you can't miss when this is close. It'll be interesting to see how the battle of the 93s goes, because when you're pressed and you're forced to reach, you're never more in danger of possibly missing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, that's when you have to push beyond your limits, man. That's when you, you learn who you truly are. Again, that's, that's what makes it special. That's how champions are made. Tyler Wilburn, 217.5, 480 pounds. We're in the 93 kilo class. And Tyler, if, you, if you're coming in here thinking, well, I'll be a little unassuming. No, everybody's tuning in for this one. Oh, yeah. Thrusted into the spotlight. Smooth second as well. Oh, yeah. That's good depth right there. Yeah. Jonathan Losa, 225 pounds, 496 pounds. And that bar is ready for Jonathan. Or sorry, 225 kilo, 496 pounds. We're in an 83 kilo class. Don't let me mess up my pounds and kilos. <laughs> Listen, buddy, we're in the States, okay? <laughs> yeah, pounds I know, only. I know, yeah, yeah. Looking to add 10 more kilo. Oh, wow. looks like he's done it. Honestly, man, he probably has like another 10 to 15 I kg was, you know that what? easy. I was going to say, you know, you, you played the first two conservative, got on the board. You can gamble a little. Yeah, yeah. It's one thing to go three for three. It's another to maybe go home and be like, you know, I think I left some money on the table there. Oh, absolutely. Scott Jennings. Representing Jamaica, 250 kilo, a guest lifter. So as a guest lifter, obviously, cannot become an American champion, but gaining valuable experience lifting alongside world champions. Talk about an experience. If you're in any sport and you want to compete with the best of the best, you know, it's like somebody offered to go a one-on-one -on -one with, I'm going to show my age here and say Michael Jordan. You'd probably say LeBron. But <laughs> I thought you were going to say Mike Tyson. I thought oh, you were going to say Mike Tyson. It's like, wow. Are you sure you want to go there? <laughs> well, this guy, that was for the day. That was for the 0.5 kilo uh. comment I did earlier. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Tip for tat, we go. 250 kilo for Scott Jennings. That's 551 pounds. Oh, yeah. Wow. Nicely done. You know, usually when lifters control their descent that much, it really does take a lot of strength out of you. Um, but the fact that he can do that, control himself into the hole and come up explosively and be smooth with it, it shows a lot of strength. Yeah, you've seen the tension he could build. Kept the tension throughout, never lost it. Kept it in the hole, came up. It was slow but steady. Javon Da Costa, also from Jamaica. And even there, look, you see the Jamaican coach there. This is more experience for them as well. You know, even the Jamaican coaching staff now 
are lifting him back there in the warm-up room and see how the American team who is at the World Championships operates. And everybody's picking up notes. Everybody's leveling up. Yeah, yeah. And I hope afterwards they get they take some time to talk to some of these coaches, Ma guys like Matt Gary, who are more than happy to give that type of le uh, advice, especially when it comes to big meets like this, because that's when you really learn when you get to have these conversations. It's an opportunity for sure. Matt Gary, very approachable, nice guy, and a wealth of knowledge. 250 kilo, 551 pounds, stays on the bar for Javon. Oh my goodness. That was two chains Javon, man. He's, he's, he's just <laughs> crushing, baby. <laughs> Oh, we got, we, I think, we, did we get a depth call there? I think it might have been depth. Yeah. Let's take a look at that. It's not a strength issue, but it might have been a stitch high. 83 kilo lifter. That's a whole lot of weight. No, we won't get a replay. That's fine. But, uh, yeah, we don't have the, the depth angle that some of the judges have, so. Yeah. Well, th this is another learning experience. You learn the, the proper depth as well. They're yeah. not going to give them away on this platform. Sean Jin. 270 kilo in the 83 kilo class. Wow, oh, nice, smooth. You know, he's, I believe, going to be joining the 600 kilo club, or sorry, 600 pound club for an 83. It's a big squat, and if you like big squats, Delaney Wallace, 295 being loaded on the bar for him. Handled by Joey Flex, part of the Flex fam. Look at Delaney. You know, he's got an aura about him, a confidence about him. You should have seen him at the weigh-ins. The drip on this man was fantastic, fresh to death. He's got that swag, man. Yeah, swag, he does. And swag is earned, by the way. You're not born with it, all right? <laughs> it is earned. The game is taught. 12 and a half kilo jump from his opener. And I love the setup. It gets you fired up just watching it. You know, Del I had spoken to Delaney about this. He said, all my setups, these are rituals that came naturally. I don't do it for a show, but I do realize on social media, it's become a thing. If you were to just see a silhouette do it, you'd be like, that's Delaney Wallace about the squat. Yeah, it becomes part of your brand. Two ninety-five for a second attempt. Get up. Oh, ah. Man, nice. it it see what the judges said. Three white lights and look at slower than the opener as you would assume. Yeah. Still hit it without being jockeyed out of position. How many kilo do you think you should go knowing? Let me add this caveat. New Zealand's Tim Monogatti, the old US versus New Zealand rivalry in the 83s is coming again. He's gonna be waiting for him at Worlds. What do you think, Gavin? I think right now, he look, that was a very strong attempt. There is no reason to go all the way, put the, you know, the pedal to the metal. It, this isn't the place, this isn't the time. You don't wanna risk injury, not worth it, right? I think two and a half, five kg would be fine. I was gonna say five, I'm gonna have to agree with you, young man. Jonathan Keiko, though, is not going to be granted the opportunity to lay back. He needs to go all out, and 295 kilos loaded on the bar for him. 650 pounds. Every kilo is going to count. Jonathan Keiko finds himself in the midst of yet another battle, but he's not unaccustomed to it. Has gone nine for nine in all previous showdowns, clinching the gold. Well, here we go again. Wow. Oh, looks just like the opener. And that was, that was, I think, the deepest squat I've, yeah, I've ever seen him hit. That was, that was incredible. Listen, if you're judging by, you know, how tight they are, a little bit of turbulence, some people's openers always look like that. Other people blow it up and it's smooth. You can't judge, you have to understand it's relative to how that squat or squats. Jonathan Keiko, that is as smooth as a second should look. He is on point and the battle is on. Now Chance Mitchell, 300 kilo loaded on the bar for him. 
Obviously, Jonathan with a phenomenal bench press is gonna cover a lot of ground there. Chance wants to get a small lead on the squats and finish it in the deadlifts. Let's see if he can do it. Eye of the Tiger, man. I think we talked about this before, but Chance is hungry, man. I, I have not seen him in a more starving state. I really do think he is hungry for this and he's gonna do everything it takes to get it. You know when a lion is most dangerous? When he's hungry, baby. When he's hungry, baby. 300 kilo, 15 kilo jump, 661 pounds for a second attempt. Oh! oh. Wow. Uh oh! It is. Absolutely smoked. Now listen, you know Matt Gary better than I do. Obviously, I am not the best when it comes to handling and all this stuff, but that looked like he had a, he could go up 15 kg. Like he, he legitimately could go up 15 kg. Not that he will, but. Yeah, you, you know, I agree. Look, look at 15 kg might be in the tank. And this is where it gets dicey and, and everyone's gonna have 20-20 hindsight on social media afterwards, probably me included. But do you take the more assured 10 kilo? Do you tell yourself, that's five extra kilo, we take off the deadlift to pull for the win, go 15? It's so hard. I would trust nobody more than the legendary Matt Gary to make that call. I'm glad I'm not making it and I'm in the booth <laughs> with you. Scott Stratford, 93 kilo, 202.5 kilo on the bar for him. We're now in our third attempt. Look, we promised you a showdown, we promised you action, and the boys are delivering in the 93 kilo class. Nicely done. Scott Stratford, three white He's lights. That looked very similar to his second, and that was, that was 10 kg up. Delaney Wallace looks like he's going to go for a 300 kilo third attempt, if you're wondering. So five kilo it is. We were both saying five kilo. Yeah. Had a discussion on it. Sounds appropriate I mean, to me. We're just the experts, you know. We, uh, we yeah. know what we're talking about, so uh, yeah. Well, to be expected. Ho hopefully he hits this and we're proved right. Let's not get too confident just yet. Tyler Wilburn, 93 kilo class, 227.5 on the bar for him. Third to look like he's gonna go home yeah. and be like, Yeah, I probably didn't have too much more. In yeah, the that looks very, very strong. And at a meet like this, that's a very uh, honestly, that's that's exactly what you want. It yeah. really is because you know that you put not only did you go three for three, but you put everything you had on the board. It's always a good feeling when that happens. Although, if I know power lifters, you always say you had five more. <laughs> All your friends would be like, Well, but you always say you had five more. Jonathan. Losa, 83 kilo class, 240 kilo on the bar for him. Five hundred and twenty-nine pounds. Yep, yep. Looks good. Nice. You know, he might have a couple kilo left in the tank. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, hey, listen, I just want to say, I'm pretty sure I predicted that one, too. He went up 15 kg for that. Right. So I'm on the money today, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, that looked very, very strong. And I definitely do think he had another, at least another maybe two and a half, five kg. Scott Jennings coming from Jamaica. 257.5 kilo on the bar for him. That is 567 pounds. Bar is loaded for Scott Jennings. Guest lifter, you know, you come from Jamaica, you, you're on a stream like this in the middle of the battle that's unfolding with Jonathan Keiko. 
and Chance Mitchell. Yep. Talk about getting some spotlight. You feel the no heat, No pressure. Man. Yeah, you, you feel, feel the, the heat. heat. Especially in that warm-up room. It's tight back there, you know? Let's see how he handles the heat. Looking to go three for three, add seven and a half kilo to his total. Wow. He has fight him. Let's see what they say about the depth. Three for three. Yeah, and like we mentioned before, man, we really have no idea whether or not he had to cut. We don't know if there were any issues with his international traveling. Um, so, again, to go three for three, to put points on the board, people underestimate how difficult that is and how special it is when you can do that successfully. I agree with you, yeah. Yeah, you got to you gotta understand, even as a new federation, now they're getting international experience. 260 kilos, so Javon had missed 250, opting to go up 10 kilo nevertheless. Just got to sink it, man. Just got to sink it. Bought himself some insurance by hitting his opener. Yeah. Wow. 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 You, you know what? I mean, he yeah, had more in him. Oh, absolutely. I was just saying, he, he went up despite missing his second attempt. Looked like he could have gone up more. He absolutely could have gone up more. And you know, it, it's actually not, it's not easy to, to miss, a, especially a second attempt, to miss a lift on depth and then come back and not even like, even if he didn't go up, just to take the same weight again and hit it on depth is difficult mentally, you know? So to go up 10 kg uh, and sink it, that, that's big. Especially when you're a lifter at this level now, you got world champions around you in mid of a battle, you get a little nervous, and um, yeah, it's a, it's a growth experience. Sean Jin, 280 kilo on the bar for him, 83 kilo class lifter. And this is a sizable squat for Sean. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Nicely done. Sean Jin is like, look at if you came for Delaney Wallace, stick around for me. Delaney Listen, man, technique's right. almost as tight as that man bun, dude. He crushed that. that he crushed it. Three hundred kilo loaded on the bar for Delaney Wallace. Bar is ready for Delaney Wallace. Get your cameras out. Very few 83s are ever going to touch some weight like this in the squats. Yeah, and Del Delaney's man, he's capable of some very, very powerful lifts. He doesn't like to post a lot of his training, but he's hit upwards of 700 in training when it comes to his squat. So, um, you know, a meet like this, this is this is obviously where he wants to solidify uh, his spot, but Worlds is going to be a battle, man. Worlds will be a battle. I, uh, yeah, I, I like how you pointed out he doesn't post a lot. I've been trying to get him to post more to help me out, but... Uh I'm sure Tim Monagati, it leaves people like Tim Monagati a little bit in the dark in terms of trying to gauge where he's at. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to get behind him. Speaking this. of, you know, good indication will be how he handles 300 kilo. Get up. It was work. It was work. You know, he doesn't look overly excited about it. It's got to be said. You know what though, dude? I think I think he might have been a little stressed out. You know, I mean, he. Um, I think like like a lot of athletes, these are big meets, man. There's a lot of ta a lot on the table, a lot of pressure, um, and especially if you're an athlete who is overly ambitious and wants to make it to the world level and win, these meets matter a lot more to you than it does to everybody else. You know, and so it definitely does. It, it's something you have to learn to cope with that type of stress, uh, that pressure, and the only way you can learn is by experience. 100%. Speaking of experience, not many more experienced than Jonathan Keiko all the way to the world, clinched the world title in a sensational battle against Gustav Hedlund in Gustav's home nation of Sweden. Returning to the U.S., finds himself once again in a battle. Jonathan Keiko, 300 kilo on the bar for his third and final squat of the day, and he's going to need every single kilo if he's going to return to the world's because Chance Mitchell's watching. 
Chance Mitchell is definitely watching. Not only is he watching, he's competing, man. He is competing. <laughs> he's here to compete. He'll be paying close. You know, Matt, maybe Matt Gary's the one watching this to <laughs> gauge. And he hits the 300 kilo squat. He needed it. He needed it. Jonathan Keiko back to the wall, needed that third squat and hits it. We had mentioned before he is battle tested. It's starting to come through. Wow. Chance Mitchell, 307.5. If he's going to make a run for Jonathan Keiko and take his spot on the national team, he needs this, doesn't he? He definitely, definitely does. There can be nothing left on the table. The crowd, you could cut the tension with a knife right now. This is actually, uh, you know, the attempt that it, it's a secure seven and a half kilo to add towards the total. He's and I believe, I believe it's a PR as well, so. Oh, seven and a half kilo added towards his total. And I had talked a chance previously, and he had told me, look at, if I'm going to keep a little bit of kilo in the tank so that I have a little more energy on the deadlift, that's what we're going to do. He said in training, if he grinds out squats, and it's a major grinder, it can impact his deadlift. He knows that deadlift is where he's gonna, he's gonna win this, if he's gonna win this at all. He's gotta pull big. He'll have the winning pull in his hand regardless. What are your thoughts here, Gavin? Is this what you anticipated? Honestly, man, I think so far it's played out exactly how we thought it would. We knew they would go neck and neck. Um, and we knew that, especially for the squat, obviously we don't get to see a lot of chances squats, um, especially even like historically speaking, but Really, we knew that they were going to be neck and neck when it came to this lift. And so we knew that if someone was going to take the lead, it was only going to be by an incremental amount, right? Um, and I'm very excited because they're specialists, right? You can argue that they are special, although they're very strong in all three lifts. Kaiko is amazing at the bench. Chance is amazing at the deadlift. So going into these lifts to know that they are so close, this is going to be a real battle, right? It's not even like somebody stole it from the start. So I am stoked for this, man. I mean, we knew this was going to happen. And, uh, man, dude, it's, uh, it's getting me fired up. Listen, that's a good segue for, if you like the squats, the best is yet to come. You know, their best lifts are the bench and the deadlift. I also want to say, Chris and Dunsmore, Chelsea Savitt, how can you not return to see how that battle unfolds, as well as pay close attention to Delaney Wallace and see how he performs. It's not over yet, and Megan Scale in the 63s. We will return in around nine minutes. Don't go anywhere. You don't want to miss this. Hi, my name is Jonathan Keiko. I'm a 93 kilo lifter, and I'm the current IPF world champion. Uh, training's been great. Uh, training's probably the best it's ever been. I'm in the best shape of my life so far. This is the first meet I think I've came in the past two years without an injury, you know? Um, so I'm kind of, you know, I'm excited about that. And I'd like to push my bench record, my bench world record up higher. Obviously it won't be real, you know, like it won't be an official here, if I do more, but I'd like to just push that number higher, obviously. It's important. 
you know. Um, again, I just want to do well. And I want to reclaim my title. And I'm willing to fight for it. Um, and I don't, and I try not to add too much more fluff on it or, or over that. You know, there's just whoever wants to come fight, I'm ready to fight. You know, <laughs> that's all it is. You know, that's, that's really all I, you know, when it comes down to it for me. Um, and the mayor, you know, it's important for me to do this because I can, you know, I want to get my, my title back. Uh, that's always nice, obviously, but it so happens that will allow me to go to Worlds and I get, you know, I would love to have like a rematch with Gustav. I know, you know, I know he'd love that or any other or any other the 93s would be there, you know, and it'd be fun, you know, and that's just something personally I wouldn't want to miss and I will always fight my way back there. The title of world champion means a lot to me because it shows that hard work can get you get you through things. It can get you through anything. If you work hard enough, it doesn't have to be lifting. It can get it can get you through anything, you know. Um, especially like you can't buy. That's not, it's something you cannot buy, you know. Um, experiences and earning something like that like being a world champion or whatever you know you that's something you cannot buy yeah, and there's no way to replace it um with that in mind uh it also means a big deal <laughs> to me because uh because of sheffield coming up you know that's a big one that i want to do and even then like uh yeah money me but at the same time for me you know, like we talked about a minute ago. Um, let's say I do, you know, let's say let's cut a year forward. I'm at Sheffield, hopefully, right? Um, it just, it wouldn't mean, the, it wouldn't be any different from a backyard meet to me because I would just focus on doing what I can, you know? But that's what, but at the same time, it does mean a lot. You know, that's what, that's why I just want to, for me, I've always wanted to just go against the strongest people, no matter what. And it just so happens I have to be world champion to continue to do that, you know, so. Welcome back, and we had promised battles, Gavin. Six-pack lap at Gavin Eden, by the way, if you're just tuning in now. Hopefully you're not, because you will have missed a sensational squat session in the 63s, 69-kilo women, 93s, and 83s for the men's, and uh, the action's heating up, my friend. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think it's only going to get better, man. I really do. I think it's only going to get better. You had mentioned when we stepped out of the squats, how Jonathan Keiko's bench press. Talk about a weapon. Most people don't gain a lot of kilos towards their total in, from the bench press event. Jonathan Keiko is one of those few, he could really bolster his total. And a lot of his day is going to depend on, is he going to go three for three here? Oh, absolutely. Well, you know what the thing is about the bench press? It, most lifters approach it where it's kind of like, ah, okay, this is just the interim, right? This is Let's just get it over with. Jonathan, this is his thing, man. This, yeah. is, this is his time to shine, and he's going to take advantage of it. So I'm very stoked to see him absolutely take advantage of it. 100%. Yeah, a lot of kilos to be gained in the bench press for Jonathan. Tessa Willis, 69 kilo class, opening with 60 kilo on the bar, 132 pounds.
Nancy driving her traps into the bench. Unrack self lift off. Now they want her arms straight. Oh, trying to hear there with the infraction is a she timed out. So yeah. I'm not sure if her arms weren't straight or the hands um, were on the on the ring, so she's a little too wide. Couldn't overhear by the judge, but either way, you, they told her so she could adjust. But you only have 60 seconds. If you don't adjust in that time, well, unfortunately, you time out. Yeah. And now, I mean, it, it's got to be said when you miss the opener. Look, it's one thing to miss your second, but when you haven't gotten on the board yet, it's a little more anxious. Yeah. No, absolutely. Ellen Liverpool, 63 kilo class, 75 kilo on the bar for her, 165 pounds. And we had mentioned earlier, Ellen obviously She's got a titan in the class because she has to go up with, with Megan Scanlon. Ellen's game plan as the underdog, as it always is in powerlifting, stay tight, go nine for nine. And if the favorite starts missing lifts and has one of those days, and in sports, this happens, you have an opportunity to capitalize. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I have multiple <laughs> stories, even for myself, where I definitely was the underdog, definitely was not the favorite. And because I executed and the person who was the favorite did not execute, um, I came in first. So. Oh, easy. Ex execute she did on the board. And it works in reverse as well. If you are the favorite, the last thing you want to give a competitor is hope. If you're the favorite, you want them demoralized, be smashing those weights, going yeah. three for three. You have a you have a lead, you're keeping your lead, you're building on that lead. Let them look elsewhere. Yeah, and it's a certain type of confidence, man. It's the way you carry yourself both on and off the platform, especially in the warm-up room. You know, nobody really takes that into account, but you are literally sometimes even on the same rack as your competition when warming up. Um, at world level meets, at national level meets, and so it, you can you can sense that. That's an aura about you that you just have to give off. Precious Andrew, 69 kilo class, 92.5 kilo on the bar for her, 204 pounds. Yeah, I'll, I, I remember the IPF World Championships. Close friend of mine, Kafui Hochayami, Canadian 83 kilo champion, was sharing the platform uh, in the warm up room with Brett Gibbs when he's in the middle of defending his title against Russell Orhe. It's an experience with who you share the warm-up room with. Three white lights, Precious is on the board. Yeah, yeah you know, speaking of Brett Gibbs too, I remember um, the first Worlds I ever watched where his arms were not fully locked out and they made him re-rack it and then he took it and he failed the bench. Every little thing matters, man. Yeah. Every little thing matters. Kristen Dunsmore. In the 69 kilo class, 105 on the bar for her, 231 pounds. Kristen has hit 112.5. Probably looking to pace somewhere around there. It's a game of kilos. You want to add as many as you can without tipping over. Start missing lifts. Handled it reasonably well. Yeah, very strong. Bench can be tricky too. You know, sometimes on any given day, you know, you could be off by five or ten kilo. You know, it's very, very difficult uh, lift to to gauge properly, especially on the day. You know, it, it's true. In the fall off, where second attempt everything's smooth, third attempt wheels come off, and it's only five kilo. Yeah. It just drops off, and it's very hard to tell for like handlers yeah. and even the athletes, where it's like, well. That came quickly. Chelsea Savitt opening with 113 kilo. You know what that means. Wow. Opening with an American record. Well, I guess training has been going good, hasn't it, Chelsea? Ironically, a credit to her competitor, Kristen Dunsmore. <laughs> Kristen right now having mixed feelings with having done such a good job with Chelsea. Oh, 
no. Oh my gosh. Oh wow, that was a record? An American record. Oh. Oh, beat the press command. I didn't. I mean, that was still a very clean ball. <laughs> Listen, I tell you what, she doesn't need to be rattled. The weight is fine. You know, it's it's a, you start getting nervous if the weight was too much. She could have held that for a press count of three or four if she wanted to. Probably a little bit excited. That's fine. Yeah, I think in this unique situation, it's, it's okay for her to take, let's say, 115 or 117.5 after this. Uh, knowing that it was that it was that smooth, you know, it was that strong. It is, and the thing is, though, I mean, it's got to be said, the drama will increase because she's in a major battle. The plan wasn't for her to start missing lists and have to retake her opener. It'll set her back, possibly. They have to have that conversation. If we retake the opener, take a big jump, a big jump, and bench can really rattle you. Yeah. Ah, it's tough. It I'm glad tough. we're in the booth and not handling <laughs> right now. <laughs> Megan Scanlon. 117.5. 260 pounds. All types of firepower in Megan Scanlon. Wow. You know, one thing that um, I absolutely despise is a really, really long start command, <laughs> especially on bench. That, I could have, I honestly could have had three meals during the time that it took for him. <laughs> And that's something, you know, you had said previously, in terms of training for, sometimes, um, you know, you go through a moment where you get a long start, come in, you're like, that's it, because that rattled me a little. Didn't think it would. And you don't think it will until it happens to you. You're like, yeah. I'm going to start pausing before I even begin. Oh, absolutely. But that she was strong regardless. She absolutely crushed that, so. Yeah, she's a pro. Tessa Willis, 69 kilo class. Moved up two and a half kilo. needs to get on the board here. You have to have a lift on the board for every event. And the bar is loaded for Tessa Willis. We're ready for round two. <laughs> the intensity is a little more fired up and sometimes it's all you need. Okay. Driving those traps into the bench. 40 seconds on the clock. She does a self lift off too, which, if nothing else, is consistent with her training. Start. Yep. Nicely done. Yeah, if I remember with Tessa, it was either the hands on the rings or uh, I'm just being told by a producer here, it was the elbows weren't straight. Just for anyone listening at home, you don't get the start command unless your elbows are straight and locked. Head is on the bench, butt is on the bench. Now you're going to get the start command. And um, she ended up timing out, but made the proper adjustments, and now is on the board. Yeah, feet flat on the floor as well, yeah. That's right. Thank you. Ellen Liverpool, 63 kilo class, taking a five kilo jump. Look at that beautiful SPD singlet and shirt. Yeah, it's interesting. I actually started training without handoffs now. So I take I take the bar myself because of that. The last thing I want, it, even if it is an extra second or two, Worlds taught me that. You know, that extra second or two it takes for somebody to get off the get off the rack, you know, every second counts, especially when you're holding it over. So um, I bet a lot of athletes, you know, are going to start doing that as they start to see, you know, higher level athletes do that themselves. I agree. And, and I mean, there's a bit of a trade-off. If you have an aggressive setup, obviously uh, maybe the handoff will help you maintain the setup, but, you know, it's not always consistent around the world. 80 yeah. kilo moved for Ellen and through my lights. How is your setup on the bench press? Is it an aggressive arch? Uh, it's funny, so it depends on what my what weight I'm taking. If it's, you know, something super light as an opener, let's say anything under 440, you know, I, I just get my, I get tight, you know, that's it. I, I don't really wrench in, but if it's anything up 440 and up, um, I grab that bench, I really wrench in my traps, man. I think about uh, pinching an acorn in between my scaps and trying to crush that. Um, but yeah, everything gets super, super tight, and I absolutely do get aggressive with it. Precious Andrew, 97.5 kilo on the bar for her. Five kilo jump from her opener. And um, would that be because obviously when you get super tight, but when you struggle and there's a fight, people don't think about this, but a big fight on the bench press can tighten up your lower back. 
and, oh, it, yeah. and, and impact your deadlift. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And you start to cramp up too, especially if you're a little dehydrated. It's hot out. You've been sweating a lot. A lot of factors. You pick your battles. Ooh, it's work, but it looks like she's gonna do it. Hey, let's give her a nice round of applause for staying with that lift. Credited with that lift, but not a whole lot of room. That's what we were talking about, though. Right? There's only a five kilo jump. I mean, I say only, but you know, it's that was a five kilo jump, and that was you know big difference. So, bench is tough, man. Bench is tough. Now, Kristen Dunsmore, 107.5 on the bar. Interesting. Opting for just a two and a half kilo jump. She's hit 112.5. She needs the kilos in this battle. Are they just trying to take the guaranteed 2.5 and then you could gamble on your third? Let's see how this moves. No, you know what, that's... That was a good idea. They, you know, it, I mean, she's being handled by Arian Messi Kamesi, who obviously knows what he's doing. He's been all over the place in terms of handling. Um, he's picking it right. He saw something in the opener. He said, we need that guaranteed two and a half. I realize a previous PR, that is not going to help you today now, is it? Let's grab the kilos we have. Chelsea Savitt missed the American record 113 in her opener, opting to retake it. Yeah. Now, we had that conversation. I tell you what, having seen Kristen take two and a half and looks like she might be near her limit, maybe she doesn't need to gamble. Maybe Chelsea's like, you know what, we don't need to gamble and go all out. That's a very good point. Who who historically has a stronger deadlift? Slightly Kristen, but it's tight and it's gonna depend on the day. Okay. So this is gonna be neck and neck. It man. is literally, I'm telling you, my friend, it's flip a coin. Blew it up. Oh my God. Blew it up. Wow. Giving no respect for the American record, Chelsea Savitt. <laughs> Just downright disrespecting the American record with how easy she handled that weight. Wow. All types of pressing power in that young lady. Now it's gonna be interesting. Does she take her plan third? Does she take her plan second weight? Or does she do somewhere in between? That is a phenomenal question. I guess it's really going to matter what the difference, what that range would have been between her plan second and her potential third. Right? Judging how that moved, could have been a lot. It could have been a lot. <laughs> 120 plus, man. Yeah, honestly. I mean, I don't know. This is These are tough calls. These are tough calls. Oh. Megan Scanlon. 122.5 on the bar for her five kilo jump. Her husband on the side on the left. Saw him in the warm up room. He was all types of nervous. Very nice. Oh. Three reds here. I didn't. Did you see the infraction there? I have no idea what that was. I mean, it, it could have been, I, I don't think she rushed the rack, man, so I, I'm not sure. And that bar is ready for Tessa Willis. Tessa Willis, 69 kg, let's go. 67.5. I mean, you know, honestly, I think, I think that this could be there. I think it's really just, it, it takes a lot out of you when you have to self-rack. Five kilo jump from a second, you're right. Uh oh. You know, it's a good thing she got that second attempt in. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what, for a lifter like her, she's got super long arms. Um, it, it's going to be difficult for her to have an advantage on the bench press to begin with. So, um, 
for her, this is this is more of like a uh, you want to solidify something with with your bench when that's the case. You know, you're not looking to go for broke or anything like that. You know, I'm I'm glad you said that about her long arms. I had a chance to talk to her in the warm up room, and she said. I'm more of a deadlift specialist. And those are deadlift arms, my friend. <laughs> they will help you on the deadlift, but they're going to impede you on the bench. So she got she got on the board in the bench press, secured herself to move forward in the deadlifts. Now she can cover some ground. Ellen Liverpool, 82.5, 63 kilo class. We had mentioned Ellen needs Megan Scanlon to start missing. Megan has missed a couple lifts. Ellen has not. Yeah. Let's see how it unfolds. Look like deadlift arms as well, my friend. Very strong. Yep. Three white lights. Three white lights. We're in relation to 220 pounds for Precious Andrew. Trying to go three for three in the bench press. Precious Andrews, 100 kilo even, 220 pounds, looking to go three for three. 97.5 was work though. Sometimes it just takes a little rise of intensity and you might be able to dig deeper. Either way, I'm anticipating it's gonna be a struggle. I think it'll be a grind, it'll be a dogfight. She will be credited going two for two in the bench press. Yeah. It gets extremely difficult to um, to grind out a bench press the wider your your grip is. I've, 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 I can't say that for sure, obviously, but I think in my experience, I, that's when I notice it the most. Like I, I've widened my grip over the years, and when I do, it becomes harder and harder because as obviously as the lift progresses, it's more tricep, right? It's more mm. tricep control, and so it becomes something where it's like it's so hard to actually grind through and press through. Um, and she had a, a really wide grip, so. Yeah, it's a game of levers. You shorten the range of motion, but you limit your ability to grind. And grind is something Kristen Dunsmore, I anticipate, is going to have to do with 110 kilo because 107.5 was work. It was, but it, it was a strong, it was a strong lift. So let's see. Oh wow, the arms are shaking. Yep, yep. yep. Get it towards the face. Uh, uh. Oh. The brakes came on around the halfway mark for Kristen Dunsmore. It's two and a half kilos she could have used, but she does have the bigger deadlift. It isn't over yet. Chelsea Sabbath now, 117.5 kilo. Um, I think they, if they get this, they'll lose their chip advantage though. Well, they got a chip in the squad, so they'll still have a chip advantage. Anyways, Chelsea, looking to add some more kilos here. Extending the American record. Yeah, and it looks like they they just decided to take what would have been their projected second, you know. Uh, you know what, I'm going to agree with you. I think um, y you're taking a look at the situation to get a read of the play. Even though 113 got blown up, let's see what this happens. A little more work. A little bit, yeah. That was probably the right call. Honestly, yeah. I, I mean, I think 120 would have been way more of a struggle, especially it right off the chest. It looked like she hit that sticking point halfway up. Um, it might have been there, but it would have been dicey. Yeah, it would have been dicey. And you really, if you're paying attention to your competitor, Kristen Dunsmore, you almost want to make it like, I'm going to take more and more kilos, keep pushing you further, further away. Kristen with a slightly bigger deadlift. Yeah. She'll cover some ground. Yeah. Megan Scanlon, 122.5, missed it on her second, retaking it on her third. This will give her the biggest bench of the flight. Yeah, she's 
got announced there. Despite being in the 63s, if she hits it, it's the biggest bench of the flight. Oh, whoa. Three white lights makes relatively easy work. Nicely done. And now we move into our second flight where we continue the battle of the 93s as well as the 83s. Scott Stratford will start us off. 100 kilo even for him. Interesting on the attempt selection with Jonathan Keiko and his team looking to cover some ground here. Very smooth opener. Nicely done. Yeah, I mean, you know what though? Joey Flex is one of the most seasoned uh, veterans in the sport in terms of coaching, in terms of even as an athlete, um, as a handler, of course. So um, Keiko's in great hands, you know, and I, I really do think that uh, they're going to be very smart about this. Well, they're going to need to be because they're definitely in a battle. And you know Matt Gary's going to be ready. Tyler Wilburn, 160 kilo on the bar, 352 pounds. Handler offering a little chalk for Tyler. Yeah, I, you know, I forgot how good the white and black. It's, it's the Eclipse, right? That, that, was that, that was the set. I forgot how good that looks. I don't think I have one. I just wear mine around the house sometimes, <laughs> and, you know. Wear it to bed. Well, never had a better sleep. That's all <laughs> I'm saying. Like melatonin sometimes. <laughs> Nicely done. And he makes the left. We're going to call Scott Jennings to the platform. Scott Jennings from Jamaica, 165 kilo on the bar for him, 363 pounds for his opener. the lift off Start. now we had gone over some of the info whoa those are long arms it's a long way up Gavin wow I think I think honestly like that distance looks taller than me <laughs> in my <laughs> entirety you could have passed through that like a bridge <laughs> <laughs> I mean I know I'm 6'4 in Tim's but <laughs> yeah, that's right we all are I carry myself like I am anyways and Sean Jin had an opportunity to talk to this young man in the warm-up room he told me he anticipates now this is more of a get the feet wet at this level with this kind of judging, this kind of competition. He's a junior. His target is the junior worlds in Ecuador, but he will have to face off with Alex Sider, mm. who is an absolute monster in the 83 juniors as well. And he'll be ready for it. Yeah. So we'll pay attention here, see what kind of total he puts up. And then he's going to have to do battle with Alex. And then we'll see who represents U.S. at the Junior World Championships in Ecuador. 175, 385 pounds for his opener. Easy. Yeah, Alex is a, is a good friend of mine, man, and he is an absolute animal. Um, and like most of these athletes that you talk to who have dreams and aspirations of Worlds in Sheffield, um, at the end of the day, man, they will do what it takes. They will, and Alex is that type of person. And he's, uh, he's hungry for it, so. He'll definitely have a battle. Sean will definitely have a battle. Yeah, Alex Sider is definitely a shooting star in powerlifting. You want to keep an eye on him. 
Chance Mitchell, 177.5. Going over to the liftoff. And when, it, when you get out there, you can't be shy. You got to tell the spotters and loaders and handlers, this is how I want my liftoff. Oh, yeah. Voice yourself. Yeah, absolutely. You have to be very assertive. Don't worry about, like, after the fact. Respectfully. Yeah, respectfully, assertive. yeah, yeah. But don't come after the fact and be like, ah, well, a little late. Easy. Very nice. Chance Mitchell's on the board. Yeah, and again, man, that's something that, that's a, just another factor that makes the bench press so difficult to gauge sometimes. Any little thing, man, if, if a spotter brings it too far forward, well, now you have to readjust. If they bring it, if they don't bring it forward enough, and now you got to engage your lats in a weird way, you know, there's all these little things that really do matter. And, uh, you know, it kind of is like you're building a cake, you know, and your strength is the foundation, is, is, is almost like the meat on the plate, but the icing on the cake, like all that stuff really does matter. You're making me hungry, sir. Jonathan <laughs> Losa. 83 kilo class, 185 kilo on the bar for him. 407 pounds. But you're absolutely right. Once it, um, I mean, these lifts only last a few seconds. When one thing goes, especially on the bench press, yeah, it can lead to a misgroove. Wow, that was very smooth. That's how you want your opener to look. If I remember correctly, his squats were just like that too. Very technically proficient, very strong, very smooth. Getting the most out of his body. Javon Da Costa from Jamaica. Opening with 185 kilo, 407 pounds. Javon, a 93 kilo lifter. Did you beat the start command? I think so. I don't think I heard start. There it is. There's a learning experience that we're talking about. Yeah. No shortage of power though, nonetheless. A little excited. But the weight, it moved well enough. It'll be interesting. They'll have to have that discussion. Do we go up in weight anyways? Do we stay there? Yeah. Here he is. Delaney Wallace, 83 kilo rising star with 187.5 being loaded for his opener. Now he told me he believes he's capable of around 200 kilo. That's 441 pounds. Is he going to go that high today? I don't know. Yeah, I, and I don't even think it's smart, you know, to go that high. You know, um, you take what you need to at right. a meet like this. And we we're talking about the setup, which for a squat is becoming iconic. Same thing with this bench. He's got swag, man. We said it before. A bit of work for an opener. Yeah, not bad, not bad. But you know what, though? I mean, nope. maybe this is. Uh oh, what happened? Now, head ref gave it to him, so Joey Flex is allowed to approach the jury, and he is. Joey Flex. Ah, uh, looks like the infraction's gonna stand. Do you know what it was? I'm not sure, I didn't hear it. I can't wait to see this. Did I hear that correctly? Is this is this 501 pounds? 227.5 kilo being loaded for the reigning world champion, Jonathan Keiko. Anybody care to see a 500 pound bench press right here? It's not often you're going to see a 93 kilo lifter opening with 500 pounds. Oh my goodness. And blow it up. 
Man, dude. Oh, I mean, look, we expected this. We, we knew this was coming, but it's still it's still a shock to the eyes, you know? I can't believe it, man. I, I How often do you get to see 500 pounds be moved that fast? You know? I just got word from my producer. Um, Delaney Wallace's infraction, the reason why we couldn't see it is actually his butt had risen. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Gotcha. Makes sense, and thank you, Pete Spence, for getting that information to us. So. It's, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, Delaney Wallace ended up moving up five kilo regardless. Wow. I don't know. Wow. That that, th I mean, look, man, I, I think he's capable, but that is risky. You know, there's, there's no denying it. That is a risky move. Because if he raised, if he rose his butt because the weight was a little heavier than he expected, I mean, you might say, well, I'll just keep my butt down next time. However, if, if it's an off day, you go up five kilo and the weight's heavier, you start backing yourself in the corner. Yeah. No, absolutely. And... If he bombs, he just needs to not bomb, and he goes on the world team. If he bombs, what's going to happen about your world team aspirations? Yeah, yeah. I don't think, I don't know. That's a dicey one. 105 for Scott Stratford. Very good second choice. Yeah, no, I completely agree. He doesn't need to go up. Move. There's no one pushing. He's yeah. going to risk. He's going to risk his world, his world championship ticket for, I'm not sure. Yeah, and, and like we said before, multiple times, the bench press is a very difficult movement to uh, to get violent with, you know, to, to really to, to, to scrap up what you might not have had any other day, you know. This is one of those movements where it really comes down to just that getting tight <laughs> and pressing. <laughs> Listen, um, he's lifting. He's so far ahead the other 83s. You think not, not going to be too much drama. Now we have drama, sir. Yeah. A story has just unfolded in the 83 kilo class. Hopefully all's well that ends well because Delaney Wallace – you can't find a better kid. All types of charming. But we're going to have to watch and find out. Tyler Wilburn in the 93 kilos. Class 167.5 on the bar. 369 pounds. Wow. Yeah, that's tough, man. It's very tough. Scott Jennings now coming up, 185 kilo being loaded for him. 20 kilo jump for the Jamaican Scott Jennings. 20 kilo jump on bench press. Yeah, that's You don't huge. often see that. Tyler Wilburn looks like he's opting to retake that 167 and a half he missed for his third. Oh, there's a down up on that bar. Um, that's one of the infractions. The bar can stall. The bar can stop. The bar can not begin to return. Even if you end up pressing it out, there cannot be an up-down movement. Yeah. And as soon as that happened, you know, it's going to get called on you. They're going to take it from you because now you're just going to expend energy you don't need. They're not going to pass it. Yeah. Yeah. No sense emptying the tank for a lift that's not going to get white light. So No, absolutely. 20 well, kilo jump, that's, I, that's big. I will say it's sometimes it's difficult as a lifter to be cognizant of that in the middle of the lift. You right. know, sometimes it's just like you just know to grind, you know. Right. That's yeah, your instincts, fighters fight. Sean Jin, 83 kilo, class 185 kilo on the bar for him, 407 pounds. Oh, very clean. You know what? He is sending a message to Alex Sider. We both have the same goals. Only one of us are going. <laughs> you got a battle coming, Alex. The blood is in the water, baby. The blood is in the water. Alex smells it. Chance Mitchell back in the battle of 93. He's 185 kilo, 407 pounds. And I like that he's going back over the handoff. Don't assume they remember. They got a lot of people coming up. Remind them. And Chance is a veteran, right? How, how long has he been doing this? Over 10 oh, years, right? Oh, he's a 10-year vet and yeah. more. Been in international competitions. 
he's not going to get caught sleeping, I'll tell you that much. Oh, my gosh. It's good. He's staying in the pocket, man, and this is what we expect. Looks good. 185. Now, Delaney Walls, okay. He, it, it looked like, I guess the scorecard was uh, misrepresented there. He's going to retake 187.5. Thank you. That makes more sense. All right. All is well. That, that makes more sense. Whew, we got a little excited there, didn't we? I was like, <laughs> please, please, Joey. But Joey flex, I, I didn't think you would make that move. Joey likes to flex on us, but uh, yeah, yeah. I don't th now, now's not the time or place, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Nevertheless, though, um, doesn't change the fact. Delaney needs to hit this to keep his world championship dreams alive. Yep. There was hit movement. I wonder if the butt stayed down enough. Let's see. It is. Okay. You're allowed movement. The butt just has to keep contact somewhere. Yeah. So what they're looking for is daylight in between the bench and the butt. Yeah. You can have movement. Sometimes one cheek rises more than the other. Totally normal. So it can throw you off a little bit. Well, I see his butt rising. Yeah, but the other cheek's probably still on the bench. Yeah. That is totally normal, but you can't have daylight right through the bench passes. And Delaney Wallace breathes a sigh of relief, as do we in the commentary. You got to stay double cheeked <laughs> up, man. You got to stay double stay cheeked double up. Cheeked up. That's right. 192.5 on the bar for Javon Da Costa. Now, a seven and a half kilo jump when you miss your opener. I hope this isn't a learning experience for this young man. Wow, that was close. It. But that was, I mean, look, at the end of the day, he had a very, very strong opener. It really was just, it's just the command, right? And I know that some people may say, oh, that's that's not something that you want to be negligent of. Um, but still, you know, if, if it's not something that you like, let's say a depth call or a, a, com a press command call, if it's something like start, it's very different. You know, you, you, you have a little bit more leeway to go up from there. It is, um, yeah, it's dicey stuff. Because sometimes you miss the opener on technicality, but you go up, miss a second on strength. Yeah. And that's where you back yourself in the corner. But, hey, all's well that ends well. Absolutely. Fortune favors the bold, and the young man moved up anyways, and he got it. Yes, sir. Jonathan Losa, 83 kilo class. Second attempt is 195 kilo. He's got a bench on him. The frame sometimes, you know, when you're stocky, shorter arms, help the bench, hurt the deadlift. You get the kilos where you can. Look very strong. Yeah, nicely done. Handles 10, ten kilo jump pretty well. Wow, two thirty five point five. That's crazy for Jonathan Kaiko. Jonathan Kaiko, two thirty five point five, an American record attempt in his second attempt only. You know, he's got a big deadlift on him. And against anybody else in the world, his deadlift is competitive. But against Chance Mitchell, he knows he's going to lose ground in the deadlift event. He needs to build his subtotal as much as possible. This is a big step in that direction. Yeah. And this should be pretty routine for, for Jonathan, right? 518 should be pretty routine. Um, I mean, I, we, we've seen him press well over 523, 525, both in competition and training, right? So... Precious kilos in the middle of a 93 kilo battle. Three white lights. Wow. Phenomenal. American record by Jonathan Kaiko, making history on the platform, but also grabbing kilos he needs. Scott 
Scott Stratford, 110 kilo for his third and final bench of the day. And what are you thinking for Jonathan Keiko? How many kilos should he add onto his bench? You know, I'm going to be honest with you. I know this sounds a little ambitious, but uh, I think he should take everything that he can get because the deadlift is a very special movement where you can pull for the win. You can load up whatever you need to load up. And if, if I remember correctly, Chance did specifically say he would put anything on that barbell that, need, that he needed to win. Yeah, no, you're 100% right. He's loading for the win. 110 moves for Scott Stratford. That, that was really good considering this is the same guy who kind of struggled right with the second. <laughs> that was really, really strong. Yeah. Sometimes adjustments, sometimes you got to cue up the right inspirational song. Yeah. Tyler Wilburn. 167 and a half. Failed on his second, looking to retake it on his third. Whoa, that ammonia hits hard sometimes, ladies and gentlemen. So this was a struggle, I believe, on his uh, on his second attempt. So, see if he can get it. Come on, shot. No, a little too much. He will move forward to the deadlifts because he got his opener, and that's why openers are so important. Yeah. Yeah, I think Jonathan will have to take. Uh, it will get. Will have to go for anything he can get. Obviously, they won't be. They they won't you know throw a shot in the dark. But uh, they they definitely will put something on that. Though they're confident he can hit something that's going to be heavy. And and that's the thing. You need to gather those kilos, but you don't want to tip over because once you miss, obviously you only move forward with your second attempt. And those are kilos you left on the table, and you're going to need them because Chance has a deadlift we don't even know the ceiling of. What he's been doing in training with his deadlift, we've never seen a 93 do that before in history. Yeah, no, absolutely. And like I said, the deadlift is a special movement, man. You really can load it up and pull, just pull for the win. And, and that's, it's deadly. It is a very deadly movement. Scott Jennings timing out 185. And this is the sporting move to do to give your competitors that minutes rest so you don't just X out your last lift you let it time out so your other competitors still get like comes out for a bow I like it so your competitors get that rest time Sean Jin 187.5 413 pounds these are junior 83s Squatting over 600, benching into the 400s as juniors. What do you think? You are Alex Sider's friend. You nervous? You confident? You how you feeling? You know what? I am excited because this is going to put some more pressure on Alex to perform, to execute, to train hard, uh, and that's exactly what we want. Beautiful third. Yeah, man, iron sharpens iron. You said it yeah, earlier, that's you know, right, that's and right. you couldn't have said it better. So you answer like a well thought out publicist, my friend. You got all <laughs> the right answers. You're made for this booth. Now 180 for Delaney Wallace. Delaney had a hiccup on his opener, retook it on his second. It was work, but he got it. It was work. Opting for a 190 here. And again, look at Delaney. He doesn't need an amazing day. He just needs a full day. Get your total. The World Championships is where the real battle will lay. And the old rivalry in the 83s between Team USA and Team New Zealand becomes anew with two new contenders. Good. 
three white lights. And I'll tell you what, with that attempt selection, two and a half kilo jump, I say it was a good call because I think Joey and Delaney are thinking, first off, let's get some positive momentum. Delaney left the squat shaking his head, not entirely happy. Misses opening bench. Positivity also has momentum. Let's get some wins. We need some wins here. We also don't need you to get injured. We don't need you to tighten up your back. The big battle's yet to come. As soon as this day is over, we've got to start training and peaking right off the bat. Absolutely. We don't want to underestimate the mental toll it can take to be missing lifts, right. especially when you feel like you should be making them. Very well said. Chance Mitchell talking about needing to hit lifts 190. This is five kilo he could really use towards his total. It's work. Can he push, lock push, out his push, left push, arm? Push, 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 push. I have never seen. Oh. And he was fighting for that. You know what? That was close. In terms of attempt selection, yeah, you probably, that was right in the wheel well. It's obviously within reason of him getting because he almost got it. If I'm not mistaken, I'm going to take a look at here. I believe chances. He was good for 192.5 previously, so obviously within his means. Yeah. You hope, five kilo. He's got a monster deadlift. No one was saying he's going to gain a lot of kilo in the bench. It's a deadlift that he's going to cover a lot of ground, so old's yeah. not lost. The battle is still on. But nonetheless, this is good news for, for Jonathan, right? For sure, if you're Team Kaiko. <laughs> You're shedding crocodile tears. Javon Da Costa, 195 for its third. Yep. Oh, Nicely done. Missed his opener. <laughs> Hits his next two lifts. Jonathan Losa, 200 kilo even, loaded on the bar for his third and final bench of the day. We're in the 83 kilo class. done 441 pounds in the 83 kilo class it's a big bench Jonathan Kaiko 240.5 kilo being loaded on the bar for him I think this is actually a very smart, fair jump to make. Obviously, it's not overly aggressive, um, but it's also not too conservative either. You know, so I think this is a this is going to be a phenomenal lift. I'm very excited to see if you can get this. An American record. He has previously hit 242.5. That's just two kilo below. When you're this high up, obviously two kilo is nothing. This is. Right on the upper end for Jonathan. They grab an American record. Grab some extra kilos. Staying in the pocket. We had seen Chance miss his third. It's an opportunity to start increasing that lead before the deadlifts. Oh, oh wow. Uh, oh wow. Listen. You have got to be kidding me. Six for six, Jonathan Keiko. Cue the Snoop Dogg gift. He can't miss. Wow. He can't miss. Incredible. In, in his head-to-head -head battles, no matter the competition, 
he just keeps hitting, and that is how you build your total, and that is how you win these battles. However, we are gonna be entering the deadlifts, and you will be hard pressed to find a better deadlifter in all of the IPF than Chance Mitchell. Yeah, and there's no doubt about that, man. I mean, like I said before, both of them are absolute specialists. Um, not only are they strong in all three lifts, but they really are deadly in the lifts that they specialize in. And uh, and honestly, I mean, look, Jonathan had more in the tank, so this was strategic, you know? So I think Joey Flex, they know what they're doing. Um, and that also means, right, you could assume they're confident in, in Jonathan's pull, right? If they didn't go even more with that, with that last uh, bench attempt, they're confident that he can pull uh, upwards, you know, well over 750 to stay in the race. You know what, that's a very good, um, you're right, that's an indication of their confidence with the deadlifts. I mean, and it is also, it's a veteran's move where do we tempt an extra couple kilo and possibly miss, play it a little bit conservative, grab those kilos, toss it towards your total. Oh, Russell or he in the back as well. So you don't want to go anywhere. We will return. Obviously, the battle of the 69s has not been concluded either. Kristen Dunsmore has a bigger deadlift, historically speaking, than Chelsea. So she lost a little bit of ground on the bench press, but could recover it in the deadlift. It's going to come down to the very last deadlift, both in the 69 kilo battle and the 93s. You also want to see how Megan Scanlon ends up. It'll be an indication how the world championship might look. And Delaney Wallace, where is he going to end off with his deadlift? Only I think it'll tell. be strong. I think it'll be strong, but you're right. Only time will tell. So, Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just under nine minutes. Welcome back, six pack lap at. I am accompanied by Gavin Aiden in the booth here today for the Powerlifting America Nationals. We have the 83s, the 93s on the men's side. On the women's side, we have the 63s and the 69s. And we got a bit of a battle for the 93s in the 69 kilo class, don't we, Gavin? Oh yeah, oh yeah, and this is, I mean, obviously this is the most highly anticipated part of the meet, man, because anything can happen on the deadlift platform. Yeah, I'm gonna have to agree with you, and look at, we see some leads right now after the bench. Those leads can get cut because we have some deadlift specialists in the house, Chance Mitchell, Slightly behind here, but he can cover a lot of ground. Kristen Dunsmore also has a big deadlift. Let's see it, Precious Andrew. Precious Andrew opening with 165 kilo. Easy opener. Very, very easy. That's how you want your opener to look. You have a little bit more room to breathe on deadlifts too in terms of the, uh, the jumps you can take, I feel. Tessa Willis in the 69 kilo class, opening with 175. 385 for Tessa Willis. It's all about having some fun, and I hope you guys are enjoying yourself. Bar is lowered for Tessa Willis. 
Yep. Nicely done. Three white lights is on the board. Megan Scanlon, 177.5 on the bar for her opener. We're in the 63 kilo class. Beautiful. Beautiful opener. Get the lifts on Ellen Liverpool, 63 kilo class. Opening with 180 kilo, that's 396 pounds. Nice. Right up. Very smooth. Yeah, that's a good opening attempt. Load up 429 for Chelsea Savage. Up next, Chelsea Savage breaking the American record in the bench press. Ready for Chelsea. Gaining a lead on her coach and friend, Kristen Dunsmore. Opening with 195 kilo. That's such a big deal, making sure that they wipe off, um, wipe off the chalk from the previous lifter. You know, Chelsea's confidence increasing after the bench press. I got, I went back there, congratulated her for the record that she had broken and she said, don't congratulate me yet, it's not over. That's that Mamba mentality, baby, that's that Mamba mentality. Listen, records are nice, but she wants to go to the World Championships. That's when you congratulate her. And she is locked in. Solidifies her record by getting a total. If you break a record but don't get a total, your record goes away. Kristen Dunsmore has to restrain herself for, con for congratulating her athlete on doing such a good job. <laughs> oh, and by the way, uh, it's going to be 500 a month from That's now on. That's right. <laughs> 200 kilo even for her opener. So she can cover some ground in the deadlift here. That's a nice wow. opener. There we go. Wow, very, very strong. And this is where Kristen re-enters the battle. It reminds Chelsea it's not over yet. Look at that wedge, too. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Yeah, I think this she's in her element now. You know, you could feel it. Look at in sports, there's a shifting of momentum right to the end. It's not who was winning in the beginning or middle or who wins at the end. Yep, we are in the fourth quarter, baby. This is the fourth quarter. Precious Andrew. 182.5 being loaded for a second attempt. Bar is loaded for precious. This is a nice size jump. Close that lockout, but she gets it. And, and Precious gets three white lights. Megan Scanlon, next Up next, lifter. Megan Scanlon. We're in the 63 kilo class. 187 and a half kilo loaded for her. That's 413 pounds. She made 363 on her. 
Looks good. Megan Scanlon getting that momentum back. Very strong finish there. Tessa Willis, 69 kilo lifter. 187.5, she had told me in the warm-up room, deadlifts is my jam, and she was not lying, and she's pulling into the 400s like this. <laughs> Nicely done, three white lights. Get the lift athlete 190 on the bar for this 63 kilo lifter. Beautiful. Nicely done. She's got a lot of room to go up, I think, for her third for sure. Chelsea Savitt, 205 kilo on the bar for her second attempt. If Chelsea gets this, she'll be at 503 kilo. World's qualifier is 504.5 to make the American team as a 69 kilo class lifter. Ooh. Wow. Okay, wow. You know, with the phenomenal day she's been having, has the door swung open for Kristen Dunsmore. 207.5 now loaded for Kristen. You know, it's, it's also very possible too that that could have been a positioning thing, but um, Sumo's tricky, man. Sumo's tricky. You can absolutely get stapled if you're slightly out of position, you know? Kristen Dunsmore can regain the lead now. We promised you he's going to come down to the last deadlift. Wow. Oh, she's got more in the tank, too. Kristen wow. Dunsmore, 207.5. Smooth second attempt. Incredibly proficient in the movement, too. 215 is her PR. And Tessa Willis, 69 kilo class, 192.5. Five kilo jump from a second. A 424 
Town final. Yep. Lock it out. All types of heart. There we go. Big struggle. That looked good to me. And yeah, get three white lights. <laughs> That's awesome. There's no better feeling than having a successful but difficult third attempt deadlift. You're right. When you got to fight for it, you're not going in the back saying, I think I have five more kilos. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're a little conservative. <laughs> Megan Scanlon, 195 on the bar for her, 429 pounds, looking to return to the IPF World Championships. Previous appearance, she was smashing world records, brought U.S. home a silver medal. Oh, yeah. Pretty smooth work. Beautiful. Ends the day happy. So make it secure for finalists in the 63 class. Look the bar to 435 for Ellen Liverpool. Ellen Liverpool now 197.5 being loaded on the bar for her. We're in the 63 kilo class. It pauses a little too much today. Precious Andrew, 202.5 kilo. We're in a 69 kilo class. Precious eyeball in that weight. She's ready for a fight. 446 pounds. You know, 182.5, it was work. 20 kilo jump is big, it's ambitious, but Precious seems ambitious today. Uh, let's go, let's oh go. my goodness, that's a Bye. fight. She Bye. just refused uh. to quit for a moment there. Oh yeah, hey listen man, this is a national championship. Right. Do you expect to see anything less? Right, fair enough. Raise the bar to 473 for Tristan Dunsmore. 473 for Tristan Dunsmore. Kristen Dunsmore, 215 kilo being loaded on the bar. Our final poll for the ladies. She will finish off with 495. And Chelsea Savitt, not coming out for her third deadlift, it looks like, will end off with 493. All right, so I this is for the win. For first place in the 69. One deadlift One away from the IPF World Championships. The return of Kristen Dunsmore. It could not get more dramatic. Kristen Dunsmore's done it. She's returned a come from behind victory for Kristen Dunsmore. Back to the IPF World Championship. She goes. See you in South Africa. Wow, what a special moment for her too because I know that the past few years have been a struggle for her. Um, injuries and, and setbacks and things like that. But that is, you know, when you have a mindset of a champion, there is no such thing as failure, right? It's just a, an opportunity to get back up and keep going. You know what? It's... um. Talk about a seesaw battle right to the end. If you're writing a book or a script for a movie, this is how you do it. <laughs> That's exactly right. It was right. probably a little too dramatic for her, but 
Scott Stratford now from the 93 kilo class. 202.5 on the bar for his opener. We are now in our second flight. We're back into the openers. Look at the 69 kilo women put on a hell of a show and a great battle right down to the last deadlift. If the 93 kilo men can give a performance like that in the deadlifts, we're in for a treat. And a little bit of foreshadowing here, Scott smokes his opener. A little bit of foreshadowing here. Chelsea had the lead on the sub total going into deadlifts. Kristen missed a couple lifts, still able to come back and win. If you're a Chance Mitchell fan, you're looking at this like, gotcha, Jonathan Keiko. You got the lead on subtotal. Chance missed the lift, but history might repeat itself right here. It's very true. It's very true. And I, if I, I, you know, I'm not 100% sure, but Jonathan's up by quite a bit, man. I mean, right? So we're, we're talking about 40 plus kilo. So was Chelsea. Um, and, and that's, well, <laughs> and that's the thing, right? We're going to, it's going to come down to who wants it more, I guess. Yeah, this is what sports is all about. Tyler Wilburn, we're in the 93s, 215. That's 474 pounds. Up next. 225 kilo is being loaded on the bar for Jonathan Losa. 496 pounds. This is where that, the frame for the bench press that helped Jonathan is gonna hurt with those shorter arms in the deadlift. Yeah, but look at the size of his quads, man. I mean, holy uh, cow. Well, he is, he's a, a fine built young man for a weightlifter. <laughs> if you stop him in the grocery store, like, I, he tells you he's a power lifter, you're like, well, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess. You sure? <laughs> Sean Jin. 83 kilo junior opening with 260 you know I, I really like Sean's demeanor like he seems very focused right but at the same time very controlled right and he seems very calm which is uh, exactly how you'd want to be most of the time you know when it comes to big performances like these like a sniper you know you got all the power in the world but it's without precision it's nothing right it's useless so um, yeah and he smokes his opener so and, and for a junior to have that kind of poise right like he's on a big scene this is a big platform you have world champions all over the place competing in battles to keep yourself calm in that situation is a whole lot different than doing that at a local meet. Absolutely, absolutely. Javon Bacosta from Jamaica will be opening with 287.5 kilo, that's 633 pounds. Come on out, Javon. And, um, my producer, Pete Spence, just showed me Chance Mitchell's story on Instagram. He posted, deadlift warm-ups felt godlike. Mm -hmm. That's a quote. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Here we go. Javon smokes his opener. Very strong. Very, very strong. Maybe a little tough off the floor, but it's sumo, so to be expected. Uh, but still looks very strong. Delaney Wallace coming out to 290. You know, if um, the old rivalry in 83 kilo class at World Championships has been USA versus New Zealand, it's also been Joey Flex. Joey Flex was coaching John Hack when he battled Brett Gibbs. Joey Flex was coaching uh, Russ when he when he battled Brett Gibbs both times. So. Also, if it's a here we go again between USA versus New Zealand, it's also for Joey Flex. Wow, here we go again. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And like we said before, uh, Joey is extremely seasoned when it comes to this stuff. He'll have his people ready, and Delaney looking to make easy work at 290, and he does. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it won't get any smoother than that. Yeah. Best setup of the day right there. 
It's interesting too. I wonder what Delaney's going to do because when I, I got a chance to speak to him in the warm-up area, obviously he was a little bit frustrated with how uh, you know squats were going and uh, and with that first attempt bench. Um, I wonder if he will go for broke. I wonder if he will if Joey will allow him to to go all the way on his deadlifts because you know I feel like with deadlifts. Maybe, maybe you could, you know, maybe. <laughs> maybe, maybe. I mean, you're about, you're about <laughs> influence in your friendship with, with the lady, I can tell already. Scott Jennings with 295 being loaded or loaded on the bar for him. That's 650 pounds. Double overhand hook rip. Two white lights, look good. Big strong lad. All right, Jonathan Keiko, IPF 93 kilo world champion. Nine for nine in his previous two battles. 327.5. That's 722 pounds for his opener. We had told you, he's got a big deadlift. It's just Chance Williams, some people would put, is almost godlike. These are 93 kilo lifters. Right around 200 pounds. Chance Mitchell, sorry. I'm getting a little lost in my excitement here, forgive me. And that's also the textbook Keiko set up for the deadlift, by the way. Smooth. Easy. Wow. Easy. Very smooth. Yeah, you had said probably around 750. Probably. Yeah, I mean, see. obviously we will see what his second attempt pick is, but for 722, that move very fair. I mean, I think that, you know, to go up another 10 kilo, 15 kilo really isn't unreasonable, you know, which would put him around that 750 mark, right? So, um, and I'm sure there'll I'm sure there'll be some games played, you know, on the, on the, on the scorecards when it comes to the uh, third attempts. But for now, we'll see. Chance Mitchell. 345 kilos, 760 pounds. 760 opener. The deadlift demon of the 93s. Everybody's nightmare. He's finding his groove. Oh, oh whoa! And. I got a feeling, I got a feeling we're going to see history made in the deadlifts oh, here. Baby. He was not lying about his deadlifts being on point in the warm up room. Man, dude. Oh, wow. It and offered no resistance. No, and you can see it in his face. You can see it when he clenched his jaw, when he dropped that barbell. He is violent. There is aggression being exerted right now on Look, that if, platform. If Chance Mitchell was somewhat sleeping through bench press, he woke up and chose violence in the deadlifts. <laughs> oh man, this is gonna be one hell of a battle, man. I'm super excited for this. 217.5 being loaded on the bar for Scott Stratford. Very smooth. Yep. What well, your second attempt should look like. You got a little room in the tank, but you got to work for it. Yeah. So if you're Jonathan Keiko right now, mm. and you watch that happen, are you even paying attention to, to a chance? Because you could probably hear the cheers. Uh, no, I couldn't care less, you know. You are in your own zone. You stay in your lane. Tunnel vision. Um, winners focus on winning, losers focus on winners. It's that simple, right? So at the end of the day, you have to be confident in yourself, confident in your coach, confident in your training, your preparation, and your game plan, right? Stick to that. No reason to steer off course. Well said, don't get in your own head, and there's a reason why you got Joey Flex as your handler. There's a reason why Chance got legendary Matt Gary as his handler. Let them do their jobs, you do yours. Tyler Wilburn, 230 on the bar for his second attempt. 15 kilo jump from his opener.
Wow. That was a great second attempt. Yeah, looks like exactly what you want your second attempt to be. Raise the bar to 434 for Jonathan Losa. Jonathan Losa, 242.5. We're in the 83 kilo class right now. Jonathan Losa, the stage is yours. I like some of these angles where we get to see backstage like that. Oh, you, yeah. you see some people in the background, and it's authentic. Whether or not they're anxious, happy, nervous, upset, it's an authentic emotion to what's happening right now. 100%. And what's really cool is that every single lifter has their own personality. They have their own way when they're in the back, when they're in the weight room, in the in the warm-up room. And being able to be around that, experience that, even learn from that sometimes, man, dude, it is it's awesome. It really is. 242.5 is good. And Sean Jin will hit the platform with 282.5 for his second attempt. Yeah, and he's setting himself up to have a, a really fantastic day, right? Yeah, absolutely. He hasn't lifted. Uh, uh, he hasn't missed a lift yet, right? Um, as I lean in for the scorecard, he has not, and could be pitching a shutout. I hope you're not trying to jinx the young man for your boy <laughs> Alex. I see you coming. <laughs> Easy now. That was about as smooth as it was going to come for a second attempt. Yeah, that was beautiful. Blink and you'll miss it. Yeah. Uh, he's got a lot more room in the tank, and he took over a 20-kilo jump. So that 260 opener was just to solidify his total. Now he's going to start making the big jumps. He yeah. looks like he's got another 20 kilo in him the way that moves. Oh, yeah. And he's set himself up perfectly, right? So the cool thing about deadlifts, depending on... Depending on your style as a lifter, you can set yourself up well where you don't exhaust yourself on your first two attempts on deadlift so that you can go all in on that third, right? right. Sometimes if that second and third are just way too close, you know, you exhaust yourself before that third and when you could have gotten it before, now you can't. You're right. You only have so much gas in the tank. You're taxing your nervous system. You know, you're going into the same budget, so how do you want to expend it? Exactly. And Javon DaCosta. Wait a second. Is he... All right, Delaney Wallace, 305, All right, now being we loaded. Delaney Wallace is the lifter. 15 kilo At jump. We're expecting, I mean, he absolutely destroyed 290. 15 kilo, I don't think it's going to pose too much problems for Delaney. I think he's going to be in somewhat cruise control to the finish line here because he doesn't need to risk anything. Yeah, yeah, and this is pretty routine for him. I mean, he has got the national title clinched up. He's got his ticket to Worlds. And he sets up like a superhero. <laughs> Easy. Yeah, that's <laughs> as smooth as they come. I don't know, I'm thinking 335 yeah. for that second. Ah, <laughs> for the third. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're trouble. <laughs> Delaney's parents got to talk to your parents and keep you guys <laughs> a, apart. Javon DaCosta, 307.5 on the bar for Javon, representing Jamaica as a guest lifter. Yep, slow and steady. You see the chalk mark running up the, run up Javon's quads. Now listen, that's when the quads kind of work against you. Help, oh yeah. Helps for shifting weight, but actually start impeding your grip in the sumo sometimes. Oh yeah, absolutely. You can even open up your hand sometimes when you rub against it. Yeah, especially if you if you do over under that underhand. A lot of people think they have grip issues, but it's not, man. It's just that positioning as you 
press through if you're not getting your hips through and it's really your quads trying to lock out and really they're just pushing against that bar that's just extra friction you know and depending on where you place that bar in your hand if you place it deep in the web sometimes that's actually bad because it gives the bar a lot of just a, it's a little bit of wiggle room but it's enough to make that bar roll and so anything pushing against it will, will cause it to, to roll out Scott Jennings 317.5 we're just a smidgen below 700. Scott in the 83s, I believe. Yep. So a 700 pound pull in the 83s. Wow, Jamaica's got some, got some deadlifters. You know if you're coming from Jamaica and you're gonna be lifting alongside this caliber lifter, they're not setting the middle of the pack, people. That's exactly right. You send your best. 700 pounds is a big deadlift for an 83. Raise the bar to 755 for Jonathan Keiko. Jonathan Keiko. Which is, this is exactly what we thought was going to happen, right? right? Well, you predicted it, but I'll jump in on that. 342.5 for a second attempt. Think he needs to have these lips because he's being hunted by Chance Mitchell. And there are people standing on their feet to watch this. Jonathan does not miss. I believe he's three competitions straight. He hasn't missed a single lift. That includes winning a world title. 755 pounds. He has been all but perfect. And he gets it. Jonathan Keiko has not missed a lift in his last three performances, possibly going back years due to the shutdowns. Still pitching a perfect shutout, but Chance Mitchell loading 367.5 for his second attempt only. That is 810 pounds by a 93 kilo lifter for a second attempt. This is an American record. Absolutely insane. And I want to take a quick moment because he, he specifically asked me to shout out Panther City Strength and uh, his gym Absolute Recomp, who obviously played a significant role in helping him get to this point. Um, but here we go, man. He is gonna, he's going to dominate this. I'm excited to see this. It is. I mean, we're just shades below the world record, and it's only a second attempt. Any chance Mitchell fans up in here? Oh, oh my, my goodness. goodness, Chance Mitchell is on fire. Chance Mitchell is on fire today. 810 pounds gets taken with authority for a second attempt and begs the question, where is the ceiling for this young man? Wow. Chance Mitchell has entered God mode. What do you think he's gonna take for his third? I have no idea. He'll load up whatever he needs. That is insane. Absolutely insane. I mean, it does, the, the ball is entirely in Joey Flex's court now. Joey Flex and Team Flex need to decide what Jonathan's going to go for his third. Whatever he leads off at, Matt Gary is going to load the bar for the win. Right. And not a kilo more. Right. And you had said, you know, Scott Stratford, 227.5 for his third and final dead. Looking to go three for three. You had said there was something about Chance that when you, when you were talking to him earlier, we're starting to see that glow. Scott Stratford locks it out. Gets it, three for three in the deads. Yeah, good for him. Yeah, um, Chance, you can see it in his eyes, man. 
You know, you really can. When you, uh, it's, I mean, it sounds cliche, but the eye of the tiger. You know, you can really tell when somebody is hungry, when they are ready to hunt, when they've been starving for too damn long, and uh, and they're ready, to, they're ready to eat, man. They're ready to eat, and um, Chance is a good friend of mine, but even just seeing him this weekend, talking with him briefly, you can tell he is ready to eat. There's something about somebody when they have that positive aura around them. It's like, you know, you feel that positive energy. You feel their belief. The way he strutted off, after that second poll of 810, yeah. there's so much more in the tank. He's got to be telling himself, Matt, it doesn't matter. Load it. I think I'm going to get it. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Tyler Wilburn, 240 on the bar, 10 kilo jump. We're in a 93 kilo class. Looks like he's done it. Three for three. So Jonathan Keiko, if you're wondering, Jonathan has 352.5 loaded on the bar for his third and final. He would end off with 893 total should he hit it. 893 would be a personal best for him. Perhaps Joey Flex in the gang thinks we need your best day to defeat this Chance Mitchell because yep. this Chance Mitchell is like none other we've ever seen. Jonathan Losa, 260 on the bar for him. Looks like we got another three for three in the deadlifts. And Very strong. You know, if if Chance Mitchell pulls this off, pun intended. Right, I know you're old, but enough with the dad jokes, right, buddy? There it is. <laughs> look at, look at. Um, it'll be far more than he's ever done in competition in terms of his previous total, and this is why. Nominations, sometimes you gotta throw them out the window and pay attention to the training. Scouting actually depends on, yeah, you know, as, as funny as it seems, go on social media, check out what they're doing in the gym. You know, you can't just go on previous performances sometimes. What Chance was doing in training would have gave everybody ample warning. And I know wow. Joey Flex and them seen him coming and they knew, Keiko, you're gonna be, have to be on the best form. Definitely, oh, 100%. Nominations sometimes, they can throw you off. Sean Jin, 292.5 on the bar for his third and final. Smokes it with ease. Great he point. had more. Yeah. Great he point. had more, but he doesn't need it today. Uh, still very strong day for him. But, uh, but yeah, and I know for a fact that Chance uh, specifically chose not to post his last deadlift of his last heavy deadlift of prep. So we have no idea. And the week before that was 844 that he pulled very easily, right? So we have no idea what he's capable of. We really don't. And, um, this is it. This is going to be the show. This is the place, and there is no better time, right? So, um, champion of champions, baby. Let's see what happens. Matt Gary had told him, "You don't post your last dead. You don't post your last squat." That's typical Matt Gary style when he talks to his athletes. I don't just handle you that day of. My handling begins two weeks before when we have that conversation. But first, Delaney Wallace, USA's 83 kilo representative, looking to close out his day with a 320 kilo dead. 705 pounds. Makes easy work of it. You know what? Probably have some more kilos if you needed it. If somebody yeah. was chasing him and he needed to fly more or whatever, but he doesn't. Yeah. Park it, save it. You're going to need it later on. Yeah, and this creates a really good baseline for him going into Worlds. Um, you know, obviously there's a little bit of travel involved since he's from New York, uh, and which is...
great experience when it comes to, I mean, we're going to have a 24-hour travel yeah, you know, for South five. Africa, but yeah. um, but still, any a, any little bit of experience that he can get is going to help him moving forward, and now that he has a baseline, he knows what he's working off of. Javon Da Costa, 320 kilo for his third and final. Gets a pass and oh. Oh. Moral victory by locking it out, but there was definitely down up. Yeah. I don't blame him for uh, selling it, if you will, at the end. I know. I Because sometimes that. you get away with something. Yeah. So sell it. Why not? But yeah, there was some down up. Scott Jennings in the 83s with a 326. This is a monster deadlift for an 83. And judging by the kilos loaded here, likely a national record for the Jamaican. Yeah. Starting to see the Jamaicans, they sent their best. They sent their A team. A little bit of a conversation here about the chip. So we're just having a conversation here. I think they're actually lowering it to They're going to lower it to 325, I believe. Um, they won't be able to take a national record here. It's not their nationals. Mm. At an international event, you know, you take international records, national events, national records, but it's not the Jamaican nationals. And the Jamaican national records will not be recognized here. Uh, one option they could have had was maybe go to 327 and a half. But the bar was already loaded. Here we are. Can he go three for three? Oh, that says. Looks wow. good. And here we are. The dramatic conclusion for Jonathan Keiko, 347.5 kilo B loaded on the bar for him. 766 pounds. Jonathan has never failed an attempt in years. Battle after battle, title after title. Can he continue that streak? Because he's probably going to need to. Currently resting 883 kilos for his total. This would be the finest performance of the world's the finest 93 kilo lifter. Joey Flex in the back, amping up his lifter. Right it's all come down to this. Come on, come on. Get up. Get up. Oh, and it looks like he's done it. Jonathan Keiko locks out his third deadlift. Nine for nine once again, and Mr. Perfect continues his streak of perfection here at the Powerlifting America Nationals. Wow, absolutely incredible. That moved better than his second. What do you think that was? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Let me gather myself. Could, could it be the title on the line? Is ah, that it? <laughs> listen, the, all right, so. <laughs> 
Let me gather my final fear. Chance Mitchell will attempt the greatest 93 kilo deadlift of all time, the greatest single feat we've ever seen in 93 kilo lift or two. 383 kilos being loaded, 844 pounds, unofficial world record, attempting to make history. The whole room is on their feet for Chance Mitchell. Can the deadlift demon turn Jonathan Keiko's world championship dreams into a nightmare? Oh, let's go, come on. He's gonna lock it out. He's gonna lock it out. He's locked it out at the top. Will it pass? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh wow. my goodness. Whoa. Never have I seen a battle like that. I can't believe it. Jonathan Keiko with a sensational nine for nine performance. A massive total, and then Chance Mitchell one-upping him once right there. What an amazing battle. Come from behind victory for Chance Mitchell. Oh my gosh. Wow. If you like sports, if you like drama, if you like seesawing back and forth with momentum, even if you like a little bit of controversy, they're going to be talking about this one. They're going to be talking about this one on every podcast, on every post. This is why you need to tune in to Powerlifting America. Forgive me, he did not have total hold. He broke the world record, but did not out total it. All right, well, I got a little ahead of myself. Jeez, my God. Yeah, I'm looking at the thing. <laughs> I got a little ahead of myself. Still a phenomenal lift, phenomenal performance on behalf of both lifters. Um, I mean, seriously, man, what what an honor to oh, witness that. But uh, I look forward to battling. I Hopefully, I get to battle both of them at Worlds, man. Wouldn't it be something if they can both be at Worlds, though? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I got, I can't believe I was just all over the Chance Mitchell pull. And because it was so big, I thought he had out total that it was a pull for the win. <laughs> Forgive me, ladies and gentlemen. It was not the victory pull. It was the world record pull. Jonathan Keiko is your 93 kilo world cha or American champion. And we are going to have, I believe, Jonathan Keiko here. in just a few moments. Don't go anywhere. you know in the 93s and it's just like that's what I live for you know like if it wasn't a fight I wouldn't be having fun so I knew Chance was going to bring his best and I'm happy he pulled you know I knew he'd pull like a billion you know uh, <laughs> you know so I knew I had to like show up so you know much respect to Chance he's he's the man you know he he deadlifts like 8 billion pounds and yeah man I mean you know watching someone watching someone in training just like dead, deadlift like 150 pounds over you every day you're just like man that sucks, you know. <laughs> so, but you know, like, 
um, it was a good fight, and um, I'm always happy to fight. Uh, with how the battle had, uh, had unfolded, and you're obviously a veteran to those battles, looking ahead, another rival of yours, Gavin Aiden, is going to be there. Gustav Hedlund is going to be there. Sasha. Sasha is likely going to be there. And we don't know yet how the alternates might go. We might see Chance Mitchell there as well again. Yeah, that'd be beautiful. Who knows? We'll have to see how that unfolds. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts leading into the World Championships? It feels like you never get an easy one, do you, buddy? I, you know, I think about that a lot, and I wouldn't have it. I wouldn't have it any other way, because it makes it for a fun meet, you know. And like, you know, I always come into these is just, you know, I could I do what I can, and I did what I could, and if it wins, that's great, you know. And you know, that's all it is. I I I I, I, ha I love fighting people so much, you know, <laughs> you know, so. It's just, it's just like, it's just me, you know, that's just me. Like, I'd rather have a clo close race and just like, you know, because we're going to remember these things, win or lose, right? You remember these experience, experiences and they, they stick with you for, your, for life. My friend, um, you have definitely given us memories in your last few performances. I want to ask Gavin Aiden a question here. Gavin, you see the battle they've had um, and it was sensational. The turnaround's going to be quick. And you guys have battled it out before, and it's come down to just half a kilo. What are your thoughts after what you've seen, knowing that you're going to battle this man at the IPF World Championships for the open world title, the biggest title there is in powerlifting? To be honest with you, man, I'm just excited to earn, earn my place among these incredible athletes. Um, they're strong, period. They're strong, um, and my job is to get stronger, and, and that's it. And, and being surrounded by such elite level athletes, people who push themselves so hard, are willing to go beyond their limits every single time, it forces you to elevate. And that's what this is all about. So I'm beyond stoked for the opportunity uh, to earn my way and earn my place among these guys. Well said. I think you speak for all of us, man. Congratulations, Jonathan. Amazing. I can't wait to see you guys both at the IPF World Championships. We'll see you in South Africa.